Hello, the internet. Oh, there we're we live. Are. Yeah, there's a little bit of a delay, um, for you know mod purposes and whatnot. Um, hello, we're Massive Damage Adventures, normally a one-shot RPG podcast. Right now, an after show. This is new, but then we're gonna do a live play, which is not new. That's what we do. Um, my name is Merrick Moyer, my pronouns are he, him, and uh, today I have five wonderful friends to discuss 
the first episode of Wheel of Time with me. Jen, would you like to introduce yourself and take it away and go around? Hi, my name is Jen. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm excited to do this. To you, Tim. Um, we... Hi, my name is Tim. My pronouns are he, him. Yep, excited to be here. My name is Patrick, and my pronouns are he, him. I am excited to be here, but that's not the third thing I'm going to say. I don't have a third thing. Hmm. <laughs> so it, it was. It was the third thing. Now yeah. it's a thing. Okay. It's a thing now. Good, good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, pronouns are she, they. Um, and yeah, I just finished the first episode. I'm so excited to talk about it. Uh, I'm Nicole, my pronouns are she, her, and I managed to squeeze in a second episode just before we went live, um, but I'm not going to talk about it because I'm not allowed to, so episode one <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. I mean, they put three episodes out immediately, and that's such a great way to build hype, and it's messing yep. with my schedule. <laughs> it's good stuff. I will definitely probably get the third one done before 1 a.m. Yeah, I feel like that is going to be a thing. <laughs> Yep. All of you in the chat who are going to be chatting and asking questions and stuff, we're just going to discuss episode one. No spoilers from episode two or three. And if we're discussing book things, um, nothing past the third book, please. Just to give people who are new to the series um, a little bit of leeway. So if we're talking book stuff, we'll only talk Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, The Dragon Reborn. Um. Yes, and then we'll rewatch every episode before every game. These games are only every two weeks, right? We can just keep going and going. Um, By the time we get to the end, we will have the entire script for episode one memorized. Yes, yeah. okay. Sure, we'll rewatch it just because of this. Just for no other reason. Yeah. We have to. It's right. now a job. Just for this. We'll do a table read. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just realized we Gibbs get. Land we get tim's video in this and that's incredible i thought yes. that patrick was gonna dibs land he did not too late i dibs land first he can be Why my moraine yeah that's <laughs> what we will be i could do a fancy british accent Ooh. <laughs> no that's a uh, kyrie Ennen accent or would you like to say care heinen how do people I feel about, I mean, <laughs> about pronunciation i got i got feelings on that so all right i should i should do announcements um <laughs> So, this episode, sponsored by NeverEnding and Roll20. Two super cool sponsors. You can see their logos down there. Let's talk about them a bit. NeverEnding is a suite of tools that you can use to design your RPG character portraits and tokens. It is also a social hub where you can share your creations and browse other people's uh, creational things. Um, right now, they are also working on a scene creator, so you'll be able to take your characters and place them in scenes and automatically output like your own web comics and eventually animations. That's very cool. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So, That's actually really interesting. Um, as they are sponsoring us, all of our NPCs um, and all of our PCs have been made using NeverEnding, so you can see our lovely little tokens up here and then some high resolution art will come as well yeah. um an account is free and a paid tier gets you more options to make more things um right now it's mostly fantasy but there's a little bit of modern stuff as well like some of the pants and boots look pretty urban fantasy yeah, yeah. some of them have excellent pockets mm. <laughs> so uh if you want to check that out go to beneverending.com got some cool stuff so thank you be never or thank you never ending for sponsoring us um our second sponsor of course is roll 20 our favorite virtual tabletop uh and constant sponsor and supporter of our podcasts and streams uh free account on roll20.net lets you upload your own maps and uh tokens to create your adventures and they have a marketplace full of professionally designed assets for you to use a uh, paid subscription gives you more space and tons of additional features like uh, dynamic lighting and macros and no ads and um they just they just did roll 20 con over the weekend and they announced a whole bunch of things a bunch of partnerships with 
new games coming onto their platform, but the feature that I'm most excited for is Dark Mode. It is coming. Mm, yes. Yeah. That's always handy. It's going to be nice. Well, <laughs> but yeah, you can see Roll20 in the background right now. Um, that map, the lovely uh, Westlands, Randland, Wheel of Time map in the front of the books is uh, being displayed through the Roll20 tabletop right now. I can, I can like, Ooh. go over here and I can, like, ping, maybe. There you go. Oh, look. It appears. <laughs> um, all right. And, of course... We have a whole bunch of giveaways donated to us by uh, Fandom Tabletop slash Cortex RPG. It is PDF copies of the Cortex Prime game book. This lovely, beautiful book that you see before you. Um, we're giving away five of those today. So, I'm very jealous. I mean, who do we, what do we got? Look at all these people in the chat right now. Most of Love you will chess win. people. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the giveaway and we're just going to open it and you can put it in. And as people go, they can uh, be putting the word in the chat and then we're going to draw out of the giveaway occasionally and just award some. Um, so running the new. Here we go. Giveaway should be going, and now all you need to do to be entered into the giveaway... What? Stream elements. There is currently no giveaway running. That's not true. Moobot just made it. All you need to do is type pattern in the chat. Pattern. P-A-T-T-E-R-N. There you go, Tim. Jump on your Smurf accounts and... <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm gonna... I'm there gonna we go. Guy. I'll behave. Yeah. It's totally working. The giveaway is working. Okay. Um, so, yeah, today we are discussing the first episode of Amazon Prime's Wheel of Time show based on the epic fantasy novels by Robert Jordan. Woohoo. Woohoo. Um, so, I hope everybody in the chat has watched the first episode. I expect many of you have watched further than we have, but I will reiterate. Um, we're only talking about the first episode right now. And uh, please, no spoilers for others. Um, okay, okay. <laughs> Where do we want to start? Uh, are we talking show first or are we jumping game first? No, we're talking show and then we're going to play the game, I don't know, like around nine. Like an hour to chat about the show. Who knows? If we start nice, losing nice, steam, we'll, nice, just, nice. we'll just start up the game. But okay. And people in the chat... Throw us your your comments. Let's let's discuss. Um, I mean, where did it where did it open? What was the let's first? Let's start thing with Leandrin's a huge bitch. Yeah. <laughs> what yes, a good she is. perfect <laughs> casting. Like the reds just look so severe. It was and a good introduction do. to that character, though. And like, because you're honestly, immediately like, I don't like you. Yeah, and a really good introduction to, like, the Reds in general. Just, like, this is their general demeanor. Like, not all of them are as quite as severe as this Red, but you can kind of expect this from the Reds mm -hmm. right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I also yeah. like how they did the intro to the Madness, right? Like, they didn't have some big, long exposition about men channelers they touched this they were just like there's two dudes running and jk he's going mad yeah oh no they actually just won i totally didn't get that i was sitting there staring at that going where are we what is this they don't look like aiel um and yeah that was good the the rock slide did look a little bit off it yeah. wasn't perfect but i mean that's a nitpick. i mean it still I looks mean... cool the scenery itself has is like yeah wow the those buildings yeah. i know they're oh, like skyscrapers all yeah, growing yeah. over i'm like oh yeah nice. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah age of legends stuff we see the the yeah. ancient stuff overgrown um okay costumes though just on the red sisters oh like okay it so military. All, go ahead yeah all of 
the female costumes are so practical. Pants, pants, so pants, 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 pants everywhere. Pants and pants boots. <laughs> and good boots, but like also the overcoat so you can still get the flow that you would normally get from skirts. So it's got all of the drama plus all of the practicality and it, it's beautiful. Yeah, and Maureen had like holsters and stuff. And yeah. I was like, yeah. what is she even she packing? Oh up. my God. Maureen's uh, commando-esque montage was was pretty insane. Yeah, was definitely good. really set a tone for yeah for show Maureen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, they uh, they. I, I'm just gonna quickly say they introduce her and they carry her off in this first episode very very much like this super competent adventuring badass equal in all ways to Lan in combat mm -hmm. and, and all the things. Whereas in the book when you meet her she's very like. She's the proper lady. She's very reserved. She's playing a role. And I like mm -hmm. this jump in more. For like yeah. for I, this for the story that they're doing. I agree. In the books at the beginning, she's very like, you're not sure, blah, blah, blah. and it's not until later you realize she's the hugest badass. And mm -hmm. in this they just started like straight up, hey, by the way, she she means business. Well, I think mm -hmm. the the difference between the book and the show is that, like in the book, they actually had the time to develop yeah. kind of that part and be like, for sure. she's for being sure. subtle, trying to come in and not give herself away right away because she doesn't. In the books, she doesn't announce herself as Aes Sedai right off the bat. She yeah. kind of comes in a little more I'm subtly here for than old stories. Yeah, and like no, yeah, exactly. fireballs. <laughs> and she this one. She's Bam! Ring! Yeah, she walks into the inn and, like, Marin Alvir knows what an Aes Sedai is on site. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good point. Uh, I like uh, the ageless face in the books. They didn't even try to do anything about it. They're just... No. Which is probably a good choice. Yeah. It would have, I that think... That is probably a good choice, yeah. If they hadn't nailed it perfectly, it would have been super weird yeah. and, like, mm -hmm. weirdly uncanny valley the whole way through. Mm-hmm. I, w I was like, ah, and you know what? I'm okay with it not being there just because visually I don't think, I think it would take so much to pull off well. And it would just probably just every time an I said I walked in, if there was like a group, you'd be like, ah, a bunch of robot monsters. So, uh, <laughs> Readbot Wright brought up their production design on Shadar Lagoth. Yeah, he's uh, so. trolling because that's uh, not in the first episode. So first okay. warning to you, Reed. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, unless it's in the first episode and we missed it, like. But for uh, next comment from Reed, oh. wow, sex, as that was yes. not so much yeah. in the books. Yeah, that yeah. surprised me too. I mean, it was we in were, the trailers. We were joking that that clearly can't be Rand because Rand has no smoothness. He's got, he's no, got no moves. What alternate sudden, universe are we in? Yeah. He's just kissing and strawberrying and then Ooh, fucking. Look at my sweet strawberry. Let's make out on this uh, stove that your parents cook at. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So hot. And they're probably within 20 feet of us right now. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I mean, they did, like, do the convenient why don't you two wash the dishes. They absolutely did. Obviously, I was this just two like, rivers. like, what kind of parents do that? This two rivers, while being very very dangerous for women joining the women's circle and getting their braid are very sex positive apparently yeah yeah uh, right. yeah the whole women's circle uh entrance exam <laughs> where they're like so uh, your, your braid means all women are are alone but also never alone and also now you also have to survive a raging river we goodbye we have no proof that that was not in the books that's true. I mean, true, but <laughs> that is very true. Very intense. But they're like, oh, we'll gather to get together on this clifftop to maybe watch a young girl die. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, it. No, she's she's okay. <laughs> cool. She didn't drown I mean, while we watched. Well, they're just it obviously wasn't that raising, raging of a whipper. <laughs> they're obviously just raising all of their women to be super strong badasses. That's, yeah, that's yeah, if you're not a super true. strong badass. Natural selection, bitch. What I, I did think say doing. that Emmons Field is like Sparta, <laughs> where they're like, yeah, you survive. What they're doing is they're teaching because Emmons Field, the um, the old blood runs strong. They're teaching their women that they need to surrender if they can channel. 
Mm. I mean, I don't that think you would kill a Trolloc in a circle of um, pitchforks unless you'd been pushed into a river first. Oh my goodness, yeah! yeah. <laughs> no. so that's, that's one thing that I really We haven't gotten there yet, there's a lot cooler stuff between there. Sorry. No, we're Sorry. jumping to that now. <laughs> and, no, like, in general, up. I think that is really cool how much the, like, women's power was just yeah. throughout the episode. Yeah. Like, that uh, was just so Genev. cool. And? I mean, the, the Trolloc, the Fade, the Shadow Man in the room, um, the dragon is reborn as a man or a woman. This is mm -hmm. a major change from the books, and it's yeah. fantastic. It's such a good way to fully tie in those characters. Cause, yeah, like, for sure. The Eye of the World, you don't get Egwene's um, POV forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, just look at the books. She is Tavaren. I mean, yeah. Oh, like yeah. so oh, much course. crazy no shit happens because of her. Yeah. I mean, up to book three, right? Of course. Yeah. Up and up <laughs> to and exclusively book three. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else beyond there, I don't know. I don't know. That's who knows? <laughs> I've never That's read what it. Happens. But Merrick, you made a good point too when we were watching. It was really cool that when they went to the two rivers, they started with Egwene. They didn't start with Rand. Mm -hmm. They didn't start with the boys. Mm -hmm. They started with her. And again, for someone who doesn't know the book series, that probably makes them very confused about who is the dragon. Exactly. I really want to read, but we'll get to that for sure. Oh yeah, we are definitely talking about, I thought it was Layla. I'm pretty sure it was Layla, yeah. Uh, I thought it was Layla. Okay, Maybe I'm, gonna, Layla. I'm gonna quickly look oh, it up. We'll have to look, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Major differences from the books by character. We kind of talked about Egwene with, with the, uh, the women's circle and the jumping. Mm -hmm. um, so we can go to Perrin now. He's married. Mm -hmm. he has a wife. Who, is, who is, yeah, weird. What? Who, who is no, no, super I mean, cool on... and has a side yeah. shave and she seems to be a better um, blacksmith, blacksmith than Perrin? Person? Like, she's a cool yeah. insert. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is yes. a... She was for no reason. I will have to say, I was very panicked the very moment they said he was married. And like, right? I have tried it. Cause like. Reasons. Yeah, yeah, reasons. reasons. Yeah. yeah. All three of us went, so yeah. she, so she has to die. Yeah, yeah we're exactly. like, oh, she's dying this episode. Okay. We're like, so, there's a character here just so she dies. Played by Helena Westerman. It is Layla. L A I L A. Oh, okay. um, but I found it very interesting. Like they they set it up like she was off doing her blacksmithing stuff while the party was going on, and Perrin comes in, has that little interaction with her, and it and seemed it's, like it's there was off. a very rocky yeah. rocky relationship. And so Why I'm very are they curious. Fighting? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm thinking Nicole probably will know, but I'm sure it'll get touched on in the next couple. of at yeah. some point as to what's going on there. And and so, like, obviously we're watching this and we're like, okay, she dies. And it makes sense that she dies on winter night and it's probably mm -hmm. going to propel mm -hmm. Perrin in some way. But when it happened, the three of us audibly gasped because uh -huh. what the hell? I did not expect Perrin to accidentally kill her. And I think I that's mean... the reason they put her in exactly. is because Perrin... Um kind of fights a lot with his self powers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how but, much we can talk about said powers, yeah. but he's always very reluctant to take them on. And one of the things that scares him about them is how vicious they make him. Yeah. And he My was, poor was... sweet soft boy doesn't need any more trauma though. It's true, he it's really true. doesn't. And he yeah. is a soft, sweet boy. <laughs> <laughs> just like you poor thing you poor thing <laughs> why would they do that to him yeah I, know. I, I, I think it's probably like obviously we haven't seen the rest of the series yet but I imagine that it's probably a in place of a later trauma that would have happened kind of a thing oh okay um, like if they yeah. cut but, something out later yeah I feel like that's probably what's gonna failure. happen mm. because that's like Mm, there's like only that. so much you can show and so much you can get into and I feel like there's a lot of parent stuff that end up, ends up going off in a very like its own direction and its own story a lot of the time and so 
Like, I, I feel like there's probably parts of that that they're just not going to be able to get in to yeah. the series. This, and so and they this... need to show a different kind of trauma a little mm -hmm. bit earlier to kind of, as well as it's that first initial insight into that that ferociousness that he has, that rage yeah. that he just was completely blinded that. for that moment and turned around and just swung without noticing what was behind him. He just was in the Which, middle of... Like, it was so believable and understandable right like mm -hmm. oh completely he doesn't expect her to have killed the trollock that she's fighting he expects something rushing towards him well to be and, ex and especially like the way that they like they the moment before they like zero in on his bloody face yeah oh, just going totally nuts. overtaken with rage you know and, it, and it's yeah yeah it was and quite it the moment and i was definitely like that was not how i was expecting that to happen no read <laughs> read <laughs> you you brought this up in the chat, Reed. Tell us what you thought about Layla, and we'll yeah. continue going. Also, we'll I just want to say it's a good public service announcement. If your partner is ever murdering something with an axe, you know, maybe don't their come up. As you come. Take a few steps back before <laughs> talking to them. <laughs> oh. I, 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 I think my safety. Not... <laughs> I do not sneak up of... on your partner. Yeah, I think yeah, we go sort of ahead, Tim. Concession and just change the story is probably a good idea if they actually like read their way through the book and could, like what scenes are practical what scenes can be properly developed and be incorporated to the story and then be like okay there's no way we can do this properly so if we take yeah. this out for practicality reasons for budget reasons whatever do we have something that we can interject into kind of like be somewhat equivalent and to bridge the gap between you know what would what what this scene would normally do so I think, like I think that's a, that's part of adaptions because with adaptions you can never do a one to one. It yeah, doesn't you work. You have to play to your medium. Yeah, it's a different mm -hmm. medium. Mm -hmm. uh, read your read. pun. Go to a corner. Yeah. Shock. <laughs> from, from read. Shock. Me. But they executed the story device well. Yes, this is true. <sighs> uh, so <laughs> allocate. So sorry, one, bad people from chat, right? Alakai Noel. I always keep a healthy distance from my partner when blades are involved. <laughs> no, we yeah, love Reed. So, so it'll be interesting to see what this scene necessarily does throughout the rest of the story. Because if yeah. I remember correctly, that uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a quite the departure. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it good. is. And I, I feel like if it's not, this is something that's going to have to stick. If it's if if this scene is going to have any like weight to it, it's going to be have to be that sticks for the rest of the series until it's, there's some sort of. I wouldn't say resolution because that's the sort of thing that just sticks regardless. But there, there has to be sort of like a narrative. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Like I think well, it's I feel like this, to it, so. this is probably what's going to be kind of the recurring trauma for him whenever he goes into his into any battle, uh, any battle. Yeah. You know, like oh god, I might get consumed by this rage again and accidentally hurt someone I love, which is something that happens from the book in the books, but just from something different you know it, it comes a little bit later down the line go ahead jen speaking of a departure for a character what the hell matt yeah what the yeah. hell literally the what one thing, literally the one thing in the show i just straight up disliked you don't need to do the cawthon's dirty like that abel cawthon is a wonderful father natty mm -hmm. cawthon is a wonderful mother and it's a great and family. Like Bode a is old. Go lucky, like trickster guy. Yeah. They went, nah. Yeah. Let's make him sad boy. It's oh, <laughs> every every group needs a sad boy. It's except yeah, I mean, in that group, ran. they're all sad boys <laughs> all the time. Um, There's so much sadness. I think they didn't need like... to be like. Also, you yeah. started sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's, yeah, okay, that's... Uh, so Matt, valid point, like valid point. Matt, <laughs> less so, but I think uh, Perrin's thing and Rand's, you know, having sex with Egwene and all of that, that's all symptoms of aging them up and making them all 20 mm. years old. But Matt's thing, it's just out of nowhere. It's just like, yeah. we should give him some motivation. And it's, like Jen said, like you said, Jen, uh, he's just, he likes gambling because it's fun. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just, not he's a just thief. A He's not, yeah, like they just, they did him so dirty. They did his mm -hmm. dad so dirty with his dirty. mom. Yeah, that was rough. I so, did, yeah. I did really enjoy his exchange with Pat and Fane. 
I was I about to bring that, that up. Was, I thought that that was really like subtle, and Patton Fane's just evil grins as he like oh, yeah. backwards into the I was dark like, magic. I forgot yeah. how creepy that character was until I saw him again, and I'm like, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I, so, I, I wasn't entirely sure who he was at first. Like, I I kind of vaguely remembered the picture cast picture that i had seen earlier before the release but i totally had forgotten it at this point and so when that moment when matt says you know thanks again pay paid fain and walks away i was just like <laughs> <laughs> just watching him suspiciously you... now <laughs> well and what were you gonna like say Tim? when sorry go ahead oh, i was gonna ask what what happened to matt's parents <laughs> okay so matt's dad is a drunken cheater Matt's mom is a drunk, and their entire family is destitute. They live in a shack, and his sisters are uh, dirty and underfed. And his mom's mean to him. Yeah, yeah. and she yes. said, you're For just going to be like your father, after he walks her home lovingly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird, because his entire characterization initially is, well, you're kind of a dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, that's not his fault, though. Well, <laughs> initial, like within when the books, he's just like the tricks you do, and he just kind of like does all these rascally things. And I'm just when, yeah. like reading through it, I'm like, eh. just let a badger okay. free on the green. So, but like it was all meant to be kind of like so justified because his parent, well, because his family's all lovely. So you're like, how the hell did you get your birth to this child? But now this is like, I guess they did it this time too, but like in reverse, and it's wrong. But no. Matt was never malicious. No, mm -hmm. no. Just everything he does, it's like in his mind, it's a hilarious joke. Why don't you understand the hilarious joke that's yes, happening? But he's irresponsible. Irresponsible yeah. is not a dick. Those yeah, are two different things. Yeah. No, I, well, yeah. Matt is always somebody that when you need him, he is there. Like, yeah, if, the if jokey he, exterior fades away and the the hero arises. Yeah, he puts his life on the line uh, at the drop of a hat. A drop of a wide-brimmed hat. Sorry, that's in the book. <laughs> um, book three! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, book three. <laughs> but he's... He's just a prankster, and it's all in good fun. Mm -hmm. And this is like he's stealing, and it's interesting. But he was well, stealing him... specifically for his family. That's true. That is true. Yeah, it gives him kind of an element of like the undercity survivor aspect, yeah. right? They class that him like as kind low. of. Yeah, I'm kind of. Yeah, I kind of wonder if they're doing it in a sense of like they're trying to differentiate the three a bit more instead of they're all just farmers from Edmonds Field, you know? Yeah. Like, if they're trying to fit them into, like, archetypes? It's true. Yeah, a little yeah. bit more, because, like, Maybe. Perrin is now the burly blacksmith. Um, Rand is the hunter, because that's where he's oh, kind of, you know, the hunter-shepherd. And now Matt is the roguey kind of trickster archetype. So, they've kind of... Like... I think they did that to kind of differentiate them a little bit more. But Not that I like it, but... Yeah, I, I can't say I agree because it does kind of go. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the characterization of Matt. Like him just being a natural like prankster trickster dude because it's fun, and because he thinks it's funny and maybe people get a laugh and then sometimes it backfires because he didn't really probably think this through. You know, just yeah. yeah. Um. So let's let's jump up a little bit in the chat. Uh, Reed asked thoughts on the dragon, uh, the dragon's fang motifs, and I love. I that. only saw one. I did only see one. So Reed, if you see more. Um, uh, if you noticed more in the first episode, other than the uh, the slaughtered sheep in the dragon's tear, uh, dragon's fang, mm. oh, which I also thought like that Murdral having to make Trollocs be organized enough to put them in that pattern that must have been just torture for that Murdral. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> no to to the left, no. Oh, Stop so eating it! No, we're leaving it to be found. Right. Um, so, Reed asked, "Can we talk uh, casting news? Because we're all here about this um, characterization of Matt, and it's very much how it was written, not how it was acted. Because I think the actor did a great job. Yeah, but we oh, do sure. know yeah. that that actor is not returning for season two. They have recast Matt. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm." I 
Ash, which now seeing him, I'm a little more upset about because yeah. I actually really like this man. I thought he did a great job. Oh, yeah. He did a yeah. great job with the material he was given. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if I've heard any information about why they recast. Like, if it was an actor choice or a director choice. Um, If I'm but... remembering correctly, it was an actor choice that it was just he wasn't interested in continuing. Mm. Huh. Well, Maybe it's going to be weird. huge. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be big. Maybe it did get weird. Yeah. I mean, oh. <laughs> there is some potential for weird going on there. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we we talked differences in characters from the books for um, Egwene, Matt, and Perrin. So Rand, pretty much Perfect. on par <laughs> with the book. Yeah. Like they didn't. Yeah. Something goes slightly not in his favor. He gets pouty. Yes. And he storms away. Yep. yep. And he and had... Out. <laughs> had, like, this, like, great, like, boyish smile and, like, this really great energy. And then, yeah, like, kind of the tantrum town. And you're like, yep. oh, yeah, I can see how this is going to go. I can see yep. you throwing Perrin across... Never mind. Um... <laughs> Room, a room, somewhere. Yeah, sometime. I can see you yeah, like, throwing <laughs> down. Throwing words. A small, thin log, perhaps. Yeah. No, I thought Rand was great, and I loved uh, all of the scenes with Tam. Um, yeah, Tam oh was my great. goodness. Yeah. I loved watching them whip out their, like, old Swordmaster moves. God. And, like, I'm just, I'm watching this, and I'm like... Once a sword master, always a sword master. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. how old you are. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. <laughs> also, not a great case to hide your uh, blade master <laughs> sword in. You put a heron on it. At least it wasn't in the <laughs> attic. Well, I, so I was, ah! when I was watching that scene, it looks like it, there was like a compartment un, like attached to the bottom of his bed. It wasn't just like slid under. So but. he did a pull. I mean, yeah. To be fair. Who is going to expect to find a heron marked blade in under the bed of a widowed guy who heard sheep? Lives up in the well, mountains. According to the first three books, no person. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> everyone he meets, he's like, Where'd you get that sword? My dad gave it to me. He's a shepherd. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. Where'd you get that That's... sword, though? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's 8 30. So uh, we're going to do a little test. We're going to. No. Oh, I'm, I'm, I was going to do giveaway. What, what were you going to say? I just wanted to talk one more thing about Rand. Sure, yeah. His sweaters, though. Who's <laughs> knitting those? They're so cute. Tam is knitting does Tam those. make those? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course he does. <laughs> nice. He's Love a it. man of many talents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could see that man just sitting there knitting a sweater in front mm -hmm. of a fire. He'd probably be yep. reading a book, but. I mean, you know, yeah, when you're relaxing in a day or, you know, there's nothing to do and, like, so it's, you're just kind of like, all right, just go go knit and life skill saves money. It gets also, cold. Mm -hmm. you, you check if the Moobot picked up on enough people because I noticed uh, that when people were typing in pattern, it, they, it didn't make a notification. Yeah, it doesn't always notify, um, but hey. it does, it does, uh, it does do it. Um, okay, so everybody, if you are new in the chat, uh, put the word pattern in because we're going to try the giveaways. So I don't actually know if Moobot's giveaway will let me draw while the giveaway is still open or if we have to close it and open it again. So we're, we're just going to click draw and see what happens. Hey, Grandmaster Funky One was drawn from the giveaway. Ooh. All right, Stream Elements is yelling at me because apparently that's the same um, command, but Moobot's all happy about it. So congratulations, Grandmaster Funky One. I will contact you via Twitch message to give you a code for a PDF version of the a Cortex Prime Handbook. Uh, be even funkier now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Possible. So real quickly. He's already me, a grandmaster. <laughs> real quickly, let me talk about uh, Cortex Prime. So this is basically, it's effectively the third edition of this rule set. It is a modular role-playing game that you can apply to any setting that you want to. Uh, because all the rules in here are basically pick and choose. There's like a base 
sort of setup, and then you go, I like this part, this part, and this part. I'm going to make a game out of it. And we're going to play it a little bit later. Uh, Grandmaster Funky One, I'm writing it down. Are we talking about the show again? Yeah, let's talk about the show again. Would pull in the Grandmaster Funky One. I'm just still. So, Trollux. Oh my god. Amazing. The visuals. The design was so good. The drop down and the run and how fast they were. And that poor dancing boy. Oh. He got got chappered. I thought it was an arrow. And then he falls yeah. down. There's a freaking axe. Giant yeah. axe. Yeah. All the way through. Him. I know. Yeah. The, it like comes out. I thought spear because like the tip was protruding. So I'm like, oh, a spear. Nope. <laughs> Slightly larger. Also, than a spear. nobody noticed that Trollox sneak up and chippity chop. <laughs> it was like like eight feet tall with a huge axe, and it just walked out while everyone was dancing, looking that general direction, and he was like. I thought maybe it threw it, like maybe there was a curtain that kind of like flew oh, like and then right ran there. forward. Uh, I thought he, because like he came out of the house, didn't he? There, I think, I think it was like it was an alley. alley. Yeah, I think he was coming yeah, out of an alley. Okay. Okay. But like, I, I mean, mean, I can kind of understand it because like middle of the night, all the fires are around. Mm-hmm, Any fire mm-hmm. is going to completely destroy your dark vision beyond the light source. Mm-hmm. So you're yep. not going to be able to see past there at all. And they had that music and dancing, celebrating going. So it makes sense that they were able to sneak up. But yep. like, it was still just like so surprising. Like, just standing there, it's like, Tom, what's going on? Oh, yep. no, you're dead. Yeah. Um, question from the chat What happened to the Trollocs language? And in the books, they speak their own language. And the only time in the entire series that I can think of that we actually hear a Trolloc speak, um, the common tongue of the Westlands is Narg in uh, Rand's home, and he says, "No sword, put down sword. Narg, no hurt." And it's all broken and tough because he's you speaking wait. around a wolf's uh, muzzle. Mm. So I, could I don't be remember more. the Trollocs talking. There could be more um, opportunities <laughs> for them to speak, but for the most part, they they grunt. Lan can understand. Uh, Trolloc tongue, though. Of course, yeah. you can, because so, that display that the two of them put on was about ten thousand times cooler than what I imagined from the books. Yes. Oh my goodness, that bond and like I love teamwork type fighting, and they're just like totally like he's just spinning around and defending her while she's channeling. It's great. It it's was- amazing. It's everything I ever wanted. Perfect introduction to a warder and Aes Sedai bond. Yeah, that is exactly what I wanted to see out of that whole situation. And it was exactly what I imagined uh, Mm -hmm. the Aes Mm -hmm. Aes Sedai warder kind of situation to be, you know, that circle of death around the massive power source that's going to blow down the rest of the army kind of thing. (laughs) All right, go, Jen. I I think I really like, too, is that they kind of did this with Nynaeve and Egwene, not like a little bit, but, and then they did it again with, with uh, Lana Moraine, where there's something huge, and then you're like, someone's going to jump in and save them. But Nynaeve and Elaine, like, Nynaeve shanked. She shanked, and shanked, shanked, and then they were eventually saved. But like, at first, no one saved them. And then Moraine was like, we're fucked. No one saved them. They just were like, meh, we'll kill them anyways. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I loved that naive her, the like, troll, like, rolls it, roars at her, so she just roars back. <laughs> that was I so gotta like, I'm like, yes! She just, yeah, she just shakes the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was just, like, the quintessential naive thing. It was, yeah. It was a check off. I'm really, yeah, I'm she absolutely her... loving her um, characterization so far, because I, mm. I just, yeah. just can't wait for the grumpiness. I just can't wait for more she's, grumpy. Yeah. She's my girl, like, she's my favorite character, and in the book, like, they really do bag on her a lot, and, like, there are a lot of pieces she has to grow, and so it's really where the show was gonna do her dirty, and make her, like, me, 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 and no, they really honed in on, like, the essence of her being yeah. mm-hmm. just a fucking badass. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of my favorite female characters within that series just because she was one like the initial bit is that i'm just like you know like the, the local healer and all this stuff but then you hear initial like thing and you kind of get hints of her like fiery personality but that was really about it but then when she like starts 
getting like some more like agency and everything like that, you really see how awesome of a character she is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like when when she's like fully confident in herself and like her power and stuff, it's herself. She's just like, heck yeah. So, I think she's had a really good opportunity to pull on her braid, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't. Yeah, been hurt, I hadn't thought yeah. of that. She, she is. Hurt, there, there has not been fretting on her part as of yet. While so. she was cleaning her rocks. <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> they didn't cast send buoy. I guess or cleaning <laughs> her rocks. Um, nah, we got a bunch of rocks here. Got to scrub them up. Hey, they are <laughs> sacred. Um, how <laughs> yeah, about the rocks? How about the visual effects on the weaving of the one power? We definitely discussed oh. this a whole bunch where like it's it's one of those things of changing the medium because mm -hmm. uh, how do you translate what only the uh, the channelers in the books can see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought they did great. I thought they did yes. a really good job. Like I think it'll be really interesting if at some point they do do like something from a channeler's perspective where we can actually see them creating a complex weave to mm. create some magic but um i think mm. for like combat situations and like just making fast magic things happen in the <sighs> that was a great visual that multi-fireball so good well and that's another good thing again so far in the first episode they haven't been terribly explaining and i really appreciate that um, they're coming and thinking people either, you know, are fans and are going to know things or are going to be patient enough that they don't need to, like, hold your hand. But the fact that they were showing the different types of flows she was pulling. So she was pulling an air and a fire to make fireballs. It wasn't mm -hmm. just like, boom, I've got fire. Um, and I thought that was really intelligent to do the because threads. they're going to slowly introduce us to the different types of yeah. elements. Yeah, they yeah, which is, And it was like sending all her air into the cracks in the stones i'm like what's she gonna do what's she gonna do with the rocks <laughs> wreck everything is what she's gonna do and it's gonna be really Break the it's gonna be really cool oh god the wine spring in no it's gonna be really cool as the series continues to see how creatively they can apply those to other channelers right oh yeah i also uh, just I'm, thought I'm... oh go ahead, oh, go ahead. Okay I, okay, I will. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's going to be really interesting when we get into some of the more, like, interesting weaves that involve, like, spirit, because I find that a lot of the, the spirit weaves are the, the ones that do the really weird and crazy stuff in the magic realm. And so um, I'll be really interested to see how they approach that and show visuals of those and everything. I was just going to say, too, I think something... I don't think they did much... Like, the show was good. I don't think they did much better than the book. Like, it was even or worse. But one thing I do think they did better was by showing the next wave of Trollocs coming down the hill, mm -hmm. it made the leaving really urgent and really believable. Whereas in the mm -hmm. books, it made sense, but it was, like, subterfuge and, you know, they had to just kind of take Moraine's word that they needed to leave. And in mm -hmm. this, it was very clear, like, get the fuck out or your families are going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Now, oh, absolutely, and that was that was cool. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I didn't like how Rand watches Tam get healed and immediately goes, "It's your fault." Blah, 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 blah. Like it's it's Rand that is the essence of his character, but also yeah. In that particular scene, he's quite thankful and pretty overwhelmed at seeing the fancy magics. Mm -hmm. I do like the the book scene where he's. You know, he took he took uh, Tam to the nave, and she was like, "Nope, there's nothing I can do. He's dead forever." And then she, he's like, "Well, I'm not giving up on that. The we're mayor going to see what to do." Yeah, we're dude, let's go. <laughs> the mayor. <laughs> and then yeah, she uses her fancy magics, and he's like, "Wow, that was super cool. Thank you for saving my daddy." Yeah, uh, that that sounds like a moment where you have to look at Rand go, Rand, meet the goddamn room. Yeah, exactly. Little, it really read, was. Read the mood a little. Um, <laughs> Rand's never in the room, so. <laughs> yeah. In his own room. We end the first episode with Nynaeve gone. Yeah, that was a she's, change. She's going to come back wearing, like, Trolloc-like horns and, like, yeah, like a head. Right out of a Trolloc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
just covered in blood. <laughs> I'm imagining she she comes back like she's gonna they're gonna be like camping down the road and she's gonna like come smashing out of the bush and uh, Lan's gonna think it's a trollock and it's gonna be her like. <laughs> Ooh, and we'll get some tension between them. And then you know other stuff. There better be some tension because I swear to God, if there's tension between Moraine and Lan, I'm out. Yeah. Well, there already wasn't. Like yeah. I, that, I already appreciated the bat scene. They it was completely <sighs> relaxed and natural and like no sexuality whatsoever. Yeah. But there was really a like, gross bath. There was a tenseness in us as the viewers watching it, being like, "Please don't, please don't, please don't." Yeah. And or just it, like, and no, then it didn't. no. So it was like, okay. <laughs> or. They're just so comfortable as an old couple that they made together and they're not like all over each other. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought it was weird because we meet a group of people later on who have no problem with bathhouses and all of that. And it's a really big deal for all of the people from this side. And so I was like, that's weird that it's it's not a big deal. Although, uh, in the first book, the Shinarans, yeah, uh, it is established that Borderlanders have shared bathhouses. Oh, well, there you go. And... If uh, the Queen of Shinar was in the bathhouse, she would expect you to scrub her back, and she would scrub yours. Yep. Well, then I take it back. It was totally normal for those characters. Yeah. Part yep. Particularly for for Lan. Probably not. And for we Lorraine. got butt. We got Lan. And we butt. got butt. Oh, yep. nice butt too. <laughs> Very yeah. good. Very good. Yeah. But I like, love I, so far, like, like that was the only time that there was like even the possibility of some sort of sexual interaction, like all of their other interactions were very much like we are close and we trust each other entirely. And that's as far mm -hmm. as it kind of goes. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. And I really hope that they keep that that way because yeah, yeah everything with Danny they're just, later on. They're just close friends. They're just, they're just the bestest buddies in the whole world. Yes. What? <laughs> And that's but what I want. I want to have a close relationship that doesn't have to be yeah. of some sort of sexual nature. They just have a close relationship. Yeah. They're... Which makes sense because they are literally attached to each other with magic. So yeah. <laughs> uh, let's do one more giveaway. Let's uh, so one more immediate giveaway. Chat for another 10 minutes. Uh, close the giveaway and play our game. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're going to draw. Um, if you are just joining the chat. Write in the word pattern to be entered in the giveaway for a copy of Cortex Prime. Thank you again, Fandom Tabletop, for throwing a whole bunch of giveaways at us. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, again, we're giving away five of these. We've already given away one. The next draw is congratulations, Gear Cavalier. Ooh. Yay. I know that. That's guy. a good rhyme. Gear <laughs> Cavalier. So, Gear Cavalier, uh, congratulations. I will uh, contact you via Twitch chat and send you a code, which you can redeem on uh, their website to get a PDF copy of the Cortex Prime Core Rulebook. And um, we'll close the giveaway in about 10 minutes and draw three more. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So, we're going to say before we get off another rant chat is there anything you wanted us to discuss yeah chat throw the stuff out what do you what do you want to hear our you know opinions for whatever they're worth on <laughs> they're very as a group of nerds mm -hmm. while you're doing that we can tell you what uh we did today so mm. patrick and merrick cooked all day they made honey cakes they made lamb they what else did you guys make all the uh, two river stuff yeah we made mashed potatoes um so lamb honey cakes mashed potatoes we made some cornbread which is not within the first three books but we did that um what a weird, <laughs> what a weird sentence yeah right like oh no we can't talk about the cornbread they eat food later <laughs> uh -huh. when you get to the cornbread section yeah and we we made a thing of it like part we, of the eighth book we, the cornbread book we went around the city. We went to um, a specialty liquor store to get uh, apple brandy, so that we we were Ooh. drinking Ironworks apple brandy. Uh, then we went to a fancy farm-to-table butcher and got the lamb shoulder. And then we went to a fancy bakery and got the sourdough bread. And we wow, were... you guys made a day out of it. Yeah, it was a really good day. And we listened to the audiobook of the Eye of the World <laughs> while we were driving. <laughs> nice. 
basically so wheel of timed it as much as possible to do in a day i think yeah and that's fantastic the honey cakes were a a big success and quite appreciated at the dinner table. so is the cornbread yeah yeah cornbread was good. all right reed asked about the dance of land moraine during combat yeah the choreography was fantastic yep oh i love goodness. uh moraine's like full body casting Mm -hmm. like she throws yes. everything oh. into it no she's so tough i love her and i'm really excited to see more or see it again yeah because it was a uh, it didn't just again like focus on one person like there was multiple things going on and so when we watch it again i'll look at different pieces mm -hmm. and yes the Merrick, knife. for sure the knife in her chest oh. it's just being stabbed Whatever. I got guys to kill the big rocks. Let's go. <laughs> um, so that actually also just talking about the the channeling uh, motions threw me back to Le Leandrin in the in the sort of prologue area, um, and just the way that she was speaking to the male channeler. Um, mm -hmm. It's a slight departure from the books, particularly for somebody who hasn't read them and doesn't have all the background. And this is your exposition, but it's also really, really authentic to how a red would talk to a male channeler. Well, I'm kind of curious, like the the small difference. I'm 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 curious if that's an actual change in the world, or yeah. if that's just by like red perception, exactly you know, her specific perception of what's going on. So, is because there... I feel like that ahead, yeah. was a feeling for a lot of the Sedai in the books, but it wasn't specifically voiced in that way yeah so do you want to be more explicit like what was the line um uh, i'm trying to remember what the line uh you touching it whenever you touch it it taints it it taints yeah. it so yeah. yeah whereas yeah yes the dark ones taint dark ones taint my and favorite hey, saying everybody. <laughs> i mean as soon as it starts getting said out loud he felt the dark one's oily taint. <laughs> Real mature. Oh, dear God. <laughs> it comes up oh. so often, Tim. So much. The whole series. Also near your bottom. bottom of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I've never ruined it for anyone. It's I mean, just... <laughs> when I was 12 or 13 and I started reading these books, I didn't know what a taint was. <laughs> <laughs> And then the book taught you it. No, it was just a greasy thing that was on the, um... I'm not going to finish this sentence. Keep going, Aaron. Yeah, 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 Keep go, explaining go. how that's not what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with words, though. You know? A greasy thing Use that was over top the uh, power that drives the universe. Yep. yep. But See? going back to what Alex said, yeah, and it'll be interesting. I assume they're going to have the power be two. Because uh, that would be wild if they didn't. But it was cool to see it. Like, that would have been a Red's perception. Like, yeah. Well, they already named one of them. Did they say Sidar or Sidine? Did they? Yeah. I did didn't catch Sidine. that. Hmm. Maybe, I did, maybe they did. Maybe that was the book, the audiobook we were listening to. That could I have been I feel like possible. that was the audiobook you yeah, were listening probably to. But I don't think any of the names like were Like I mentioned. said, I've imbibed a lot of Wheel of Time today. I mean, that's interesting. Like, do they go as close to the books as, uh, as they could? Or because it's 30 years later... Um, do we consider, you know, the way we talk about gender nowadays versus the way gender was considered at when these books were written? Yeah, they're very, um, like, it wasn't until I was, like, reading up and preparing my character for this, this game that we're about to play that I was like, oh, yeah, they really are, like, male on one side, female on the other, and I just, I never really, I'm like, that's not... I wonder how that works now. Well, I mean, like, like the whole the whole series, when it comes to it, the theme of it is like he want he wants to really drive home the point that men and women are more powerful and better when they're working together. Yeah, but very true. the whole very clear dichotomy between that is yes. just very odd, especially coming from a non-binary person. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so. Like, you're like, okay, choose a side. Yeah. And you're just kind of like, but we don't have to choose sides. Really. But to 
access magic in this game. You do? Yeah. Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. And in the show, who knows where they'll go with that? Because they might just go with the one power. And mm -hmm. why not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just checking yeah, in on our would... Sirenscape. Because... I th that would drastically change... A few... mm -hmm. It would shift a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Because there mean, wouldn't be... Are... I can't sense when you're channeling, you can't sense when I'm channeling. Mm -hmm. uh, it would just be like a different take on how you embrace yeah. the source, I suppose. Yeah. What what would lead to the madness? Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be cool make... if they. No, I was I was just gonna say like if they do end up going from like one one source of power, you know, both men and women draw from it, then yeah, how does the corruption work? Mm -hmm. It would be kind of cool if they still had the two different types of power, but anyone, depending on how they were trained or innately knew how to grab that power, would choose which one they chose. And Interesting. It, and if, if, if they change it so that the dragon could come from, like, either or something like that, then I think that's our first hint of, okay, so that's definitely some, like, that should be the big, like, something's different this time around. That's a really good point. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, because if if the dragon reborn turns out to be a woman, now what? Right. No? But it would be cool if it was like, yeah, if you grab it with like might and like force, then you're drawing on one side. Whereas if you like surrender, then you're drawing from the other, and then Nynaeve would certainly be drawing from the force one. <laughs> <laughs> Nynaeve, that's a new direction. Nynaeve is starting to go mad. <laughs> That explains so much. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't picture it being like, yeah, be, no, that would that just be like, no, I'm gonna. Beat that would be her, you know, that would be very very foot. interesting. That would be another way around doing her block. Instead of she can't channel the power, it's if you do it your way, you're going to go mad. Hmm. That's so yeah, I like learn that our way. <laughs> Well, it's, I mean, you could keep doing it your way, but, you know. <laughs> You're going to go uh, a little bit crazy. Good luck. <laughs> well, I mean, from, I don't know, just from my, just from the prologue scene, like, it seems to me that it's it's men channeling is the problem. Yeah. Still, like, regardless yeah. of any other thing going on, it's still men channeling that's the problem. Otherwise, there wouldn't just, they wouldn't just be hunting down men. There would be a even split between the two. So, yeah, yep, for sure. That's true. So speaking of pro, oh yes, they cut out the whole book prologue. Yeah, we got no dragon mount. But they said the thing. They did. They That's ended true. the episode by saying the thing. Oh, Chanticleer oh. finally left. That's good. No, there, there. Uh, I love Rosamund Pike. Yeah, fan. she's doing amazingly. She, and uh, it's I like nine-ish. Yeah, I read an interview nine with her where she was upset with how she had done Do uh, Doom, the movie that she had done. Whoa, I forgot she, she was in Doom. Yeah, she didn't realize that it was such a big cult favorite. She didn't. She wasn't a gamer, so she didn't know uh, that people really, really liked Doom. Uh, and she felt bad for not giving it her all. So she was like, I'm not doing that with Wheel of Time. <laughs> so she went <laughs> full hog into it. Yeah, like checking fan boards and stuff. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to, like, especially, like, because Wheel of Time is huge. Yep. Like, if you know about Wheel of Time, you it it's it's huge. And then, I mean, really, to take up any character from that big of a series, like, oh, I would be very intimidated. Let alone, you know, a, like a key figure. Yeah, let alone Moraine herself. <laughs> Let's just watch episode two right now. I'll just fire it up. We'll just... Hey, I got the music back. I fixed it while we were while we were chatting. Okay, um, it's nine. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to say about the first episode? I mean, we chat. Uh, no. we'll, more will probably come up. Okay, so everybody in the chat, you've you've put your names into pattern. We're gonna we're gonna draw three more. Uh, for this giveaway. Uh, do we need a five-minute break before we go into the game, everybody? 
grab water, go to the washroom. Um, Probably a good idea. I can use it. Be a bad idea. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Grab the snackies. Everybody in the chat, make sure that you put in the word pattern. P a t t e r n. Good. I see you, Kajorlian. You snacked in. Did you put your name in? You better put it in. Put it in. I don't know which one of you two it is, but I'll get you. Kajorlian. It's for one of these. Thanks for dropping by, Reed. Have a great night. Yeah, we're back in two weeks again on this. Two weeks? Two weeks. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're going to close this a giveaway. Can do it. All right, there are four more entries, and we're drawing three. Those are some fairly good odds, friends. Uh... Giveaway three. Who has the worst luck? Who has the worst luck? Oh, no. Five pips. Uh, Alakai <laughs> Noel, congratulations. And. Woo, 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 woo. Uh, number four. Read bot right. You just left. Hey. Oh, no, you're here. <laughs> Hey. You still get it, even if you would have left. I would have just sent it on yeah. Twitch chat. Excellent. Congratulations. And fifth one, again, thank you, Fandom Tabletop, for sending so many of these. They oh, sent yeah, no, us amazing. 20 codes. So good. Five yeah, so yeah, they really came Invite out more people. Yeah. <laughs> Bring people, because we need to give these away. And the final yeah, okay. one. Congratulations, could not find any more valid entries to draw. <laughs> wow, what a weird Twitch username. Yeah, weird. <laughs> so I guess that, that it had four entries and we had already drawn two. Mm. Ah. So they weren't taken out of the pot. They were just, yeah. Um, <laughs> what do we got? Like, look at all these people in here. Uh, Agile, Kajorlian, Lucy Rambles. Uh, Tina Reef, all you folks could have been getting these things. I guess we're just going to have to run one more giveaway at the end of the stream for anybody who stays around that long. Mm -hmm. And if okay. you don't, we'll find you. We'll find you. No, we won't. Not to hurt you or anything, to get you a, <laughs> to give a, a, you a, give a you PDF a copy. Yeah. 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 Give you a present. <laughs> All right, so we are going to go to a five-minute break. Thanks for hanging out while we chat. We're going to be back to play a game of the Wheel of Time in Cortex Prime. All right. That was a rhyme. Yep. <laughs> I eat some slime.
<laughs> hey everybody, how's it going? We're back. Um, <laughs> our countdown. I was trying to do the countdown and it was like five. It skipped four. We're at two. Okay. Okay, we're here. It's all good. We're on. It's on now. Right yeah. now. Uh -huh. Audio is going. Output is going. Everything's on fire. We're great. We ready to play? Yeah, You're yeah! Ready. Okay. It's born ready. Mostly ready. So let's just do this. Oh, this often is horrible. Scary nightmare. Cool. Prologue. The wide hearth in the manor house was cold, but Belenia de Manche did not let the chill in the room touch her. She studied maps and ledgers, tracking the presumed progress of the Fairlight, a river merchant that ran the Aranin from Arafel through Tarvalon to Arangil in Andor. It should be reaching the village this evening. My lady? A voice called out, its youthful tenor full of anxiety. My lady, there's a disturbance in the stables. Belenia carefully aligned the map on the table before turning to regard the girl. Roshava Bashagar was Saldean and had been an apprentice to Belenia for two years now. No need to be alarmed, child. We'll see to it. Belenia adjusted her yellow fringed shawl and put a comforting hand on the girl's shoulder. Lead on. The Restless Blight, Chapter One. The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. In one age, called the Third Age by some, an age yet to come, an age long past. A wind rose in the great wood south of Arafel. The wind was not the beginning. There are neither beginnings nor endings to the turning of the wheel of time, but it was a beginning. In the village of Konala, a rest stop for riverboats on the Aranin, the wind raised a flurry of snow against the thick coats of five travelers. The dock beneath their feet creaked as the gust, uh, in the gust, as the strangers watched a ponderous trading barge move slowly southward. Players, please introduce your characters. I am going to switch our Roll20 map to the village of Konala. There you are. And let's let the viewers get a little bit of a look at this. So our players are on the docks right here. And uh, let's switch the names. Jen, if you want to take it first and we'll just go down uh, top to bottom. Um, could you please describe your character as they stand on this windswept dock in the uh, village of Kanala? Yeah, so Branter is, uh, he stands there like um, a statue. Like, he is solid. So Tranter isn't necessarily a tall man, and he is not muscled in, like, a sexy Hollywood way. He's muscled just, like, solid brick. He's got a bit of a tom-tom, and he's got his hair up in a man bun, and he just he has that kind of hired goon look to him. Um, but he stands there with his hood up, and the wind blows it, and it seems, you know, not cold, not wind, nothing will budge Trant. Oh. Just real quickly, can you tell us how Trantor sounds? <laughs> talk out loud? Could you maybe... <laughs> we just hear... No, 
No, not yet. I you can't. Like, Trantor? No. I, <laughs> yeah, cool. I did, That's fair. I need to uh, practice my mic off. <laughs> she did it earlier, and it was pretty great. Can't wait. All right, uh, Tim, go ahead. Uh, what is, uh, is uh, your character look like, and what is, what are they doing? Uh, so Iskander Shahin is a blade master from Arad Doman, and currently he's looking slightly miserable because it is cold. He is well bundled and he is shivering, <laughs> despite you know being bundled up with like thick furs. And he, but he's trying to like grin and bear it and sort of like uh, you know not you know try to be like sour about the whole business, but at the same time, man, why does anybody live here? There are much warmer climates, much more hospitable climates, but sure, we are here, and all right. So, and he is, um, being from Aradoman, he is uh, dark-skinned, his hair is in uh, sort of dreads and braids. He, underneath the thick furs are, like, very nice-looking silks and stuff, like, very very fashionable from, from where he comes from and so there would be a more elegant quality to him if it wasn't for the fact that he is trying to not look miserable yeah it's cold it's gross the the river is is terrible and there is snow everywhere um Patrick uh what do we how we are we just visually or name Visually, is there name, a way? what are are you standing heroically um, on a canoe? Um, on a canoe? There are boats here. Is that... <laughs> How would you be standing on a canoe? Anyway, <laughs> no. Is Very the <laughs> short answer. Very carefully. because uh, that's a terrible idea. Um, no, uh, leaning against one of those like dock posts, you know that they have like one of the the moorings, uh, just kind of. Uh, pressed against it trying to trying to seem unobtrusive like pressing himself against it to be just part of the scenery uh in fairly plain clothes um you know browns and brown there's not a it's not a huge amount of like a you know <laughs> country folk cl clothing you know stuff you can get easily there's no dyes um rough woven stuff but like well like uh he's prepared for winter he's you know dressed for the season um, definitely handling the cold a little bit better than uh, than Iskandar. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is Nalam Krinar, and he's a, a very pale skinned, dark hair, sort of rough and uh, curly ish, hanging down over his face. Um, sort of not uh, he's not a muscly guy. He's not a, he's not stick thin, but he's somewhere in between, sort of that like almost like a like a fighter's grace, you know. That fighting muscle, not like, like beefcake muscle. Mm -hmm. But he's a uh, yeah. He's just tr uh, uh, trying to seem out of the way. Uh, Isha Drakthen is standing fairly stoically on the dock, looking around, trying to get her bearings. Um, but uh, she's not super tall. She, you know. Uh, five foot mid ish and um fairly handsome face and if you look close enough you can see the the hint of agelessness starting to start uh in her features um and wearing a brownish red cloak that she's holding kind of loosely closed against the cold but if you look in between, you can see flashes of green underneath the cloak. Okay. Oh, and she has a uh, white key sign uh, on her forehead. Um, so, Renea does live here. Uh, she's dressed for the weather. She in in, like, you know, sort of rough hides and furs. Um, her boots are are well made and like l lower legs wrapped against the snow. Um, she's fairly tall, 
um, particularly for a woman. She sits at around six foot one. Um, and she also has this bright red hair that it looks like an attempt was made to braid it. It's not cooperating. It more or less does what it wants. <laughs> so, so, like, all red hair that I've heard about, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's something resembling a braid going on there. Uh, and yeah, she's kind of wandering past the dock, was going about her business, but there's these random strangers here. Okay. So let's zoom in a little bit. And uh, this beautiful background map we have is uh, from Tom Cartos. Uh, who I support on Patreon. So if you want some super sweet maps, check out Tom Cartos. Um, Shout out to Tom! Oh. Woo -woo. I, I say as if maps. I know Tom at all. We've used his maps like a bunch. He's made some sick maps. We have. Yeah, he's basically like our dear friend who we know super well. So uh, Best friends, I would say. Yeah. Tim, if you remember, and uh, Nicole, you were in that game as well. The Seventh Sea game. Oh, yep. Actually yep, yep, yep. used a variant of this map. Uh, flipped 180 degrees. Oh, that's cool. So, oh, so he had a... Uh, no. Do we see their characters? Uh, yes. So all of your characters are on there. Uh, could everybody double check that you can move your token, please? Yep. Excellent. Good. Oh no, Iskander fell onto the nets. It's one of those tests where he like steps out to see if he can, you know, real quickly nimbly step back like when you jump on the water. <laughs> um all right. So, you're all standing sort of separately on this uh, rickety dock, the wind is pushing at it, there's very few people around. You see uh, a couple of folk moving between buildings, uh, but this ship coming up towards you is what sort of draws your attention. And it's, if you remember from the map, it, it's got sort of like a, a waterway coming out towards the river, and there are some buildings to the north of that. It's coming past those, and from there you see a number of shapes drop off the side, dark in the um, in the sort of like evening lighting, and uh, in the cold water begin to move towards shore. The boat continues towards you. Do we know? Is that like? Does that seem like a regular thing? Like ah, yeah, of course the. The docksmen who jump off to swim towards shore. No, that definitely, the... that definitely seems wrong. Particularly as this is, uh, like a cold, snowy day. Yeah, who okay. would be wanting to go for a swim right now? Escander is oh. definitely looking around and going, "Excuse me, is is this a normal habit of uh, northerners?" He just looks around. Uh, nope. Tranter's gonna look for like a rope that he can tie like a circle onto, try to toss that to them, or maybe they have like some buoys or some nets. And he's gonna start looking for things he can toss to the people so that he can drag them in. So they're pretty far up. Like think uh like you'd need to jog for a minute or two, and they're mostly just shadows in the water, uh, making their way to the shore, and the boat is coming closer. Like you can be doing that. Like, maybe more people will be jumping off the boat. But to go and help those people, you'd have to, like, run along the um, uh, the shore towards them. Is this, like, a normal-looking barge? Is this the sort of thing that comes through here all the time? Because we're a regular trading stop. Yep, it looks like a trading barge probably carrying various, you know, crops and uh, borderland goods down south. Snow peppers. I'm going to go for a jog, then. Queen peppers. Give yeah, Tranter will start heading down the shore too with with rope. Okay. And so I'm torn because I worried about the inhabitants of this boat as well. Uh. So. <laughs> I tried to uh, control your characters on OBS, which I'm going to tell you doesn't work. <laughs> So, 
so Tranter and uh, Nicole, your character's name again? Renea. Renea. Um, yeah. Start heading up to the north when the boat gets a little bit closer and it's clear um, that there are grouped forms on top of the, like on the deck uh, in heavy cloaks, like against the wind. Um, the boat is coming closer and closer. It uh, slams into uh, like a sandbar or something underneath. Like it's come too close to the shore and it hits something and there's a loud crack and a creaking sound. And then more forms begin to jump out and you see the like burly, muscly, dangerous forms of Trollocs moving southward Ooh. towards you. Wow. Well then. Restless indeed. <laughs> Let's no go. Kidding. Welcome to the game. <laughs> hey, Trollocs! This started. <laughs> What oh. if we don't make it past the first five minutes of the game? <laughs> oh, that'd be so embarrassing. <laughs> New character. Well, everybody, that was an exciting game. <laughs> All right, yeah, for if game I die in two. five minutes, I'm going to go watch the next episode. You're in Iliad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we've done here is these Trollocs running towards you are grouped in um, three groups of three with one clearly like larger, more uh, well-equipped form leading them and kind of pointing and roaring in a bestial manner. Um, and so, don't be alarmed by the size of these Trollocs, as- That seems like something we should be alarmed ah! <laughs> That yeah, represents a group of Trollocs. Oh, okay. Bob. A group of Trollocs is surprisingly also alarming. <laughs> Is a group of Trollocs like a click? <laughs> but yeah, they did name them. It's a fist. It's a fist. Yeah, a fist. Is it a murder? Is a five? Is five hundred? Um, is it a Congress? It's more like a squad. You can actually like see squad on one of them. <laughs> but, uh, a pinky. It's a pinky, a pinky of Trollocs. A pinky of Trollocs. Um, oh, oh, that just reminded these? me. Oh, that's that's the show. What did? What did? Well, I thought she said pinky. Oh. So when when, when Perrin uh, went chippity chop chop, and uh, and his wife was like laying there, and she grabbed his pinky, like that like traditional show of like her affection for him, I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna cry in the first episode of the damn new show. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, these trollocks as you all engage in battle. Um, these groups are um oh we're using this lovely roll 20 feature where if you mouse over them you're going to get uh some hover text Ooh. oh yeah yeah and so you can see the trolloc stats so the squads are 3d8 which basically means there's three trollocs there and you're like when you kill a trolloc you basically get rid of one of its dice and then the brute is its own thing. Um, he doesn't really have hit points. It's tracked in a little bit of a different way. We're going to quickly move through Cortex stuff. So um, you are initiating combat because they're all running towards you. And this is sort of a, um, a focused initiative where you as a group determine... Who goes first, and then you pass initiative uh, to like other people, and then uh, everybody has to go before somebody can go a second time. Now, everybody should write down that they have one plot point to spend. Awesome. I'm fancy and awesome, so I get ten. Yeah. Merrick is really trying to wipe us out. He's like, no, I've just sent several Trollocs towards you. And also, it's one of them is cooler than the rest. Yeah, this is the way he's going to make us see all of, like, the world. And Wheel of Time is going to kill our parties off and then be like, next time, you're starting in the Yule Waste. There you go. I'd be down for that. Our, our next, uh, our episode three in the Land of Mad Men. <laughs> wow. What an amped up third game. 
<laughs> um, okay. So, uh, seven massive, horrifying Trolloc creatures created on BeNeverEnding.com uh, run forward towards you. <laughs> I mean, look at them. Look how cool they are. They're really awesome. They are very cool. Uh, I, I always know. knew that BeNeverEnding.com was the Forsaken. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it for years! How do I... Uh, nah, it's not working. Anyways. Um, oh, no, wait. I do. I do have a thing. I do have a thing where I can show what I did to create these these trollocs. Here we go. Wait, does this mean that the dark... The intern is the dark source of the dark one's taint? <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so, that so trollocs really? just cute, though. <laughs> I know. It's, cute. it's a little cute. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm still going to stab it. But I'm gonna you eat you in my stew! If you can get in a pot, that'll be super great! Also, this guy just wants to listen to, like, AFI. <laughs> I was not gonna say that out loud, but yeah. <laughs> he he likes AFI and Tanisha's of E. I was about to say. <laughs> I feel like yeah. that his leather vest would be a lot more <laughs> studded. Like, you know? <laughs> I see we're being heavily judgmental of the uh, trolls. I mean, oh, of, okay. of things you can be judgmental of, Tim. I yeah, we're not gonna okay. fight them. We're not gonna fight them with our swords. We're just gonna break down their self confidence until right. they okay. leave. So let's talk quickly about uh, Cortex because yeah, you can you can break down their self confidence and make them leave. Uh, what? Absolutely. Turns out Tranter's just a sassy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> your pants don't match your shirt. <laughs> and that makes you not as cool as everyone else. So You're bad and you should feel bad. <laughs> okay. Well, we are. <laughs> so you can describe what you want to do and effectively you're going to roll and you're going to try and exceed um, their, like, their dice. You need to get a, a d10 of effect. If you get a D10 of effect, you can knock out one Trolloc immediately. If you have two D10s worth of effect somehow, like you spend a second power, um, PowerPoint and you've got PowerPoint, plot point, and, um, and you've got them in your dice pool, you could take out two Trollocs in one hit. Um, if you get a D8 or less of effect, you're going to downgrade them. You've wounded the Trolloc, and instead of being a uh, 3D8, the group's going to be like 2D8 plus 1D6. Make sense? You can do that by drawing your swords and slashing at them, shooting arrows at them. You can do that by yelling harsh language at them. Mother's milk! <laughs> Mother's milk. Ah! Um, so, as these Trollocs rush forward, Tranter and uh, Renea are in the front, but the people in the back, some of them have some ranged. Who wants to go first? I can go first if no one else wants to. Never go for work. it. Oh, I haven't played loose. this game before, so I would <laughs> like a demonstration turn. <laughs> for sure. I can do that. Um, I'm going to move a little bit closer so that I can hopefully cover Renea and Trainor, Tran, Trantor a bit better. And I see the big fancy one. Am I going to shoot straight at him? And so I start weaving some power around me and... Um, combine some air and fire into a fiery bolt and launch it straight at him. Okay, so in our let's let's hmm. Okay, okay, okay. In our sort of homebrew offline games before, we'd had like a, a seize the source sort of thing where you you drew in the power and created an asset saying that you have the power. Uh, okay. So I think I think that we should keep that rule, if that's okay with you. Sure, absolutely. So what you would do for your first action is, um, you know, embrace the source. And so we're going to step through very much uh, an action for everybody's uh, edification in the Cortex Prime system. Uh, everybody has a distinction, a distinction, or three distinctions, and there's always a distinction in every role. So. What is the distinction that you would like to use for embracing the power? Uh, I will use my Aes Sedai of the Green Aja. 
Perfect. Distinctions are like pretty much always rated at D8, so you put a D8 into your dice pool. Then you want an uh, attribute. So as you're drawing on, on the power, uh, we've got nine attributes in this game that uh, we have designed. Which one are you using? Um, I am going to use my dexterity to manipulate the weak. Oh, okay. So, is it dexterity? Are you manipulating a weave now? Or, or is it more of a composure? Um, oh, yeah. I guess... Mm, maybe a will Maybe presence. presence. Presence? Okay. Sort of or, like a... Or wits. Like, um... Yeah, you're talking about willpower. A uh, resolve? Maybe? Resolve is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that would be a good one. Yeah, for sure. Um, these terrifying things are coming towards you. You hold your resolve. Uh, next, we go for your value. What is motivating you in this moment? I mean, survival's a big um, one, but that's not one of our values. I would say that the closest one would be love. I'm trying to protect people. Okay. So now we've got our three, um, like, main... Uh, Oh, the word is out of my head, but there's three sort of sets that you add in. And then, if you have any specializations or signature assets or powers, they all go in as well. So your yeah. channeler die would also So I'm a channeler, so I add a d8 for that. And would I be able to use my combat weaving for this, or would that be kind of when I'm actually trying to attack? Yeah, I'd say when you're, okay. when you're weaving. Okay. Okay. So you've got your dice so, pool set. Yeah. So I end up with a D8 for my distinction, a D10 from my uh, resolve, and a D6 from my love, and then the extra D8 from my powers. Okay. And then Channel. in a test, the GM rolls first, and I'm going to say that it's a 2D6 uh, just for difficulty, like standard difficulty of embracing the power, but I'm going to throw an extra D6 in for the cold biting wind. And so I roll my 3d6, I keep two. So I rolled three, six, and five. So I'm gonna keep the six and five and you need to beat an 11. Okay, so an, okay, so I got a six and a five as well for two of my dice and then how, uh, and then I can add in something else using a plot point? Sorry, um, because I think you just need to equal. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think you just need to equal. Uh, it's been a minute, and you know, there's so many games. <laughs> so many systems. <laughs> the difficulty is the number you need to beat with your own total when you roll the dice. If you beat it, the test is a success. If you didn't beat it, it is a failure. Beating the difficulty means rolling higher. So yeah. Okay. If you also got an 11, then you'll need to spend one plot point to add an additional die in. Then I will do that, which brings it up to a 14. Okay. Now, what have you got for leftover dice? Just by and die size. D8. Okay. So the D8 becomes your effect die, which means you now have a D8's worth of uh, embrace the power. And... I've got a super cool thing for anybody watching. Um, Isha. Uh, I'm going to put Isha's power and we're going to put on our traits. And now we have uh, at the bottom of the, um, the Twitch, sort of like a, a rotating uh, oh, thing of nice. the traits. So there's a D6 of bitter winds on the scene, and uh, Isha has a D8 as you you draw in the power. Uh, who would like to go next? I mean, I'm just going to do the same thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, why don't you step us through it? Uh, well, it's a lot scarier, and I'm trying to be a little less surreptitious about it uh so it's it's like a as always it is a, a forceful action there's not a uh, there's no embracing uh this particular side of the source 
so it is a, a an aggressive seizing mm -hmm. as I will reach out. Um, so for distinctions, haunted by Sidene. Probably yeah. resolve again. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and power. Power. Because it's destruction is what the lab is searching for. Okay. Oh, and uh, specialty in channeling? Specialty in channeling or the power of channeling? I got both. Okay, so your specialty will need to be a little bit more specialized than just channeling. Uh, like Isha has... No, it's, I'm good at all of it. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I do it all really, <laughs> really well. has combat weaving, which is much more specific. So you gotcha. can work that out when it's not your turn, but add the D8 for your uh, your power set. And I'll Perfect. roll your, uh, your difficulty, which I rolled uh, 3, 4, and 6, so I'm going to keep the 6 and 4. Your difficulty is a 10 you must beat. Great news. You said a 10? A 10. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can beat that with a 12 with a D10 of uh, effect. Ooh, oh. okay. And we'll add a D10 of... Um, I'm looking at the wrong character. Nalam. Gosh, does that have to go and show me up by a dice size? Yeah, always. <laughs> uh, if Iskander was slightly closer, he could see that uh, Nalam has begun sweating profusely. All right. Uh, Nalam and Isha have taken their turns. Um, Trander, Renea? I just had a quick question. So it's not a back and forth, like we all go and then Trollux go? Oh, um... It is supposed to be a back and forth. I was just <laughs> totally not paying attention. I'm like, let's yeah. see the players do cool things. Um, <laughs> uh, also, I want, I, got to you. With, I want to cut it with, it's not the size of the die that counts, it's what you roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> it was there and I had to take it. It like, was excellent. It was excellent. Absolutely. You are not wrong, Ex sir. Uh, Except you are not what? wrong at all. In this situation, it is the size of the die that matters. Tim it doesn't matter what you roll with plot it. Point, oh, we will see because. about it. <laughs> It, it specifically <laughs> effect size matter, Merrick. It, you just get, it's the it is literally the die size. You don't even have to roll on it. It's just which die is it? It's uh, the system. Patrick, I'm hearing a lot of uh, a lot of disgruntlement. You're just gonna lose a plot die. Uh, what? Or, no! What? Don't worry, plot dice don't exist. I said I said okay. the wrong word. Um, okay, so what Still we're gonna do? Tim is uh, Isha takes a turn, Trollox, run forward. Uh, Nalam takes a turn, Trollox, run forward. Please continue. Okay. That's gonna be uh, Tranter would like to go, but I was gonna hold my action until they get within range. Is that something I can do? Um, sure, why not? Because, like, Tranter's not gonna run into a group of, like, nine effing Trollox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, seven. Um, seven. Thank you. Yeah. But what he is going to do is he's going to be epic, and he's going to, like, do this cool, like, draw his foot to the side through the snow to take a sideways, like, um, guarding stance. And he's going to draw back his cloak, and he has a big two-handed uh, two hafted axe that he draws from a loop, and he takes a defensive position, ready to swing as they come up. Nice. And we'll say that you're you're preparing an action when they come up. You'll you'll hit them. Right, preparing a chop. Prepare to chop. Okay. Okay. I Don't mean, I kind of want to do. Trent. Talk to him. <laughs> Don't sneak up behind Red Door. He has an axe. <laughs> We've all seen it go horribly wrong. <laughs> yep. We know how this goes. Um. Yeah, I kind of want to do about the same thing. Renee is going to, like, look at the Trollocs. She's never seen a Trolloc before. Be like, huh. Look at Trantor bracing himself. She's going to be like, okay, sure. <laughs> and I'm going to step up beside him and ready, um, brace my spear to receive the Trollocs. Okay. He nods at you and you're immediately best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Besties. Love it. Well, Iskander is exact. Oh, wait, are they going... Uh, Trollock Brute runs forward. 
Well, uh... I just got this titty. <laughs> it's that scene uh, from Monty Python where he's just constantly running up towards the castle yeah. guard and they're like... And then suddenly they're here! <laughs> yeah. These Trollocs got like the little teeny chicken legs, like they got flamingo <laughs> legs. They got the bad luck of the draw. Yeah. That yeah. sucks, because they still probably weigh like 700 pounds. Their Trolloc uh, oh. uh, clan is not talked about very often. They don't get sent out of the blight very often. That's a <laughs> the chicken feet. <laughs> the chicken feet. There's the clans of Cobal and yeah. Davil and Chikan. Yeah, the Davil, Cobal, and uh, and um, uh, Co Catrice. Oh, there we go. Well, no, see, and this is why I'm in the northern freezing areas because they need the icy cold to deal with their knee joint pain. They need the ice. <laughs> like it's just the only way they can handle. Like. <laughs> it's either Barbara or an ice pack, so just operate in the northern cold. They're like, this is cheaper. No one's afraid of these drill locks. No. Nope. I think I'm running up. Just wait. Oh. Um, okay, Iskander's turn. Well, Iskander is exactly the type of person who's going to charge in seven drill locks, so that's what he's going to do. All right. <laughs> he's going to. We're just standing there in guard, and you're like, fwing! He's going to draw his, his own uh, Aaron Mark blade and just charge in there with a certain amount of delight because it's better than shivering in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna some good hot blooded action. Yay, I get to move my body. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so many squats I could do. <laughs> okay. Um, well, zone wise, uh, you can move up and get to Tranor and Renina. Uh, you could hold an action, or you could create a um, an asset if you like. Oh no, he's he's running to Trandor and uh, Renina. That he's gonna cool. be there, and then look, he'll be there here. But it's gonna definitely look like he's gonna continue moving on, if at all possible. All right, and so everybody has gone. So we're gonna switch over to the second round, and we're gonna start with Trollocs, and the um. We're going to have the back layer of Trollocs uh, stop and pull out short recurve bows and fire at the three of you. Um, That's not cool. So we're going to see... So rude. They fire at a Skander uh, as he's running yep. along the, uh, the dock. And so what this is uh, is going to be... Because you're not sort of in melee, we're not going to do a contest. We're just going to do an opposed check. So, okay. uh, the Trollock Squad. Whoa, come on, Trollock Squad. Where are you? Um, squad goals. Eight. And you're going to roll your defense first. So, you go ahead and. Uh, Roll your defense, and that's going to determine what I have to beat. Okay. Uh, uh, we're going to use a d8 for my distinction of... Earned my Heron Mark Blade in battle. Uh, dexterity, also another d8. Values, glory d10, because heck yeah. Yeah, arrows uh, slamming he is a blade around master. you. He is a blade master, so he's also going to use the skills to, you know, parry. Can you do that? Is that mm, a thing, blade master? I'm going to say blade master is not going to help you against arrows. Okay, so neither will start fighting, but so I'll have those three dice, and I'll roll those. Okay, and they are throwing in 3d8 for the number of Trollocs, and a d6 for their bestial wrath. Unfortunately, they do not get to add in their dice for their Thakandar blades. So I got a 6 and a 7, so that's a 13. Dang, 13? Oh, that's a lot. Um, oh, and I... Ooh, okay, okay, so I got an... 11 that I could use so all the arrows duk, 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 into the dock around you and you're moving swiftly past them however I rolled a 1 which is an opportunity so somebody, Tim gets the first choice, he can say yes or no first you can spend a plot point to uh, downgrade a, a, a complication so you could uh, actually just get rid of bitter winds like 
you could use this plot point to say the winds shift and those aren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, or you could uh, upgrade a uh, uh, a positive asset, a um, and you could just be like, you know what, Isha is, uh, you know inspired and her power goes up to a d10 to match Nalum's. Uh, or you could create a new asset at a d6. Ooh, that's interesting. Huh, I didn't even know about the asset creation part. Um, I might just be uh. misremembering that, but I love it, so... Yeah. Mm. Uh... That is a good question. I will spend the plot point on something. You know what, um, just because it's probably inconveniencing us more than it's inconveniencing them, I'll get the better end, they'll say that uh, for a brief moment the better winds goes. But yeah, no, there, there's a certain amount of temptation to do as a creature, it's just a matter of like, can I come up with something now? No, okay. Well, so. <laughs> okay. So yeah, in the heat of battle, you, uh, you haven't noticed quite yet, but the weather shifts just a little bit. The winds move a little ways, and uh, I'm going to back off the, uh, the Sirenscape winds. And... Did he sword fight the winds away? He did. He sword fought <laughs> the incredible. winds away. They did saw I, his I... hair and Mark, and they were like, no, we're out. <laughs> his blade split the wind. It does and it one around him. It does one of those like super high um uh like zoom in crane shots showing the wind swirling as Iskander is running and yep. arrows are slamming and then like he uh stands beside Tranner and the winds like settle a little bit. Nice. Also cool. I just want to say arrows are tiny blades, Merrick. So if <laughs> If someone shoots arrows at you, you can blade fight each arrow as if it was a, a sword, but a small one. A very tiny sword. Patrick, um... I'm going to lose more things, aren't I? No, no, no. Like, I, I could pick up a bow and arrow. You could come over to my backyard, do some target practice. Uh, I have a slow-mo guy's video to show you uh, <laughs> where they he successfully cuts arrows out of the air every single time. Wow. After having it. never tried it. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So that was me taking the Archer Trollox. Um, who would like to go next? And you're bang on, uh, Lucky Noel. Um, so the Trollox are still at a distance from us, yes? Yeah, the Archer one stopped, but the other squad uh, have their blades out and are still coming for you. Probably for hugs. <laughs> Probably for hugs. Right. right. <laughs> and it's obvious that the scander is like going. Oh, Do you it's... get a turn now, or was that like an opposite? Like was that that was because that was the trollock turns. He's so still... it could be I take my turn, right? I could if yep. everyone's okay you with could. that. I'd be like, I'm going now, and then just charge. Off. Gets chopped down. <laughs> okay. I should I'm going release now. the fire. Is... I could go next and try my fireball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's see it. Cool. Let's try. <laughs> All right. Who do you want to target? Um, I'm going for the, the brute, the leader looking Scanner. one. Oh. I t <laughs> <laughs> she targets Nalam. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Huh? That seems real scary. <laughs> Channeler. I can't I'm behind that. you. He's behind me, <laughs> and I can't sense male channelers, so. That's the only thing I got going for me. <laughs> but if I start seeing fire flying from behind me, I'm going to put two and two together pretty quick. <laughs> you turn around and the lamp's like, what was that? That's crazy. No, there right. was an eye back there. Yeah, she just ran over there. I don't know where she was. She just ran off. So, she uh, said, sorry for help, and then ran away. So the Trolloc Brute um, has 1d8 for uh, its own rating. And then uh, a D8 for the Bestial Wrath. Uh, its blade is not going to come into play, and Cowardly, not quite yet. Um, 
So the difficulty you have to beat is a six. Not too bad. Okay, oh, yeah. so I'm going to do my Ace of Die of Green Aja again for distinction. Um, and I guess it would be manipulation for this, for manipulating the weave. That so, makes more sense. Um, I did steal this uh, sort of build from World of Darkness. So uh, you've got mental stats, physical, and then social stats. And then there's sort of power and dexterity and then resistance along. So manipulation is still more of a, a social oh, thing. Oh, more of a social thing? Okay, mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Um, so would this be more like presence or intelligence maybe? Yeah. For weaving? Intelligence for weaving? That would make I'd sense. say intelligence, yeah. Or, like you said, dexterity could play into this one as well. Eh, my intelligence is better, so I'm going to go with that. <laughs> go for intelligence. <laughs> yeah, fair. And it then, um, I think I'll go with glory for making a glorious attack against the uh, the big guy. Good. And add in my extra d6 for combat weaving. d8 for channeling. d8 for channeling. Okay. And d8 for the power that you have drawn. Right. Oh my Which goodness. you can um, like you can take your action and shoot stuff. You can also take your action to say I draw on more of the power and try and get a higher uh, effect die, right? To change uh, that d8 into a d10. You don't have to like yeah. throw your fireball. I'm just saying. No, that's I'm. A th I'm gonna throw my fireball for now, but I will. Keep Are you sure that you don't want to just sure. just keep drawing the power? Just like a bunch. You can hold more. It feels I really can. great. Absolutely. It's so awesome. <laughs> Burned out. Okay, Burned so out. for fireball ing, um, that definitely beats a six, and I'll uh, I can use my two d8s here to make that a ten, and then a d10 of effect die. Okay, perfect. A d10 of effect die. That's a solid hit. Um, so I am going to spend a plot point um, to not have this okay real quick i'm going to uh explain the difference in npcs we have mobs which are just dice that get knocked out then you have uh minor gm characters like this one that on a successful hit get knocked out but i'm more likely to spend a plot point to have them take a wound and then there's full GM characters that are just like players and they need to take stress tracks to be knocked out. So this one, you've knocked them out. I'm spending a plot point out of my pool to keep them in with a D10 wound. So um, what does your fireball do and what is that D10 wound? Um, okay, so yeah, uh, having successfully drawn in the power, she weaves air and fire together to create a red hot fireball that she launches straight towards the the leader um and uh strikes him right in the chest and uh we'll say that it um scorches kind of off of his left side and just completely scorches his arm um making it really hard to use mm -hmm. yes new trait of terribly scorched d10 mm -hmm. amazing nice and it's just, and it's, and it's, it's holding its sword like a little limply and it, like, its hand kind of, and tosses the sword to the other hand. Yeah, it'll be scorched. Yep. All right. At which point yeah, the Trolloc squad arrives and they're going <sighs> to get wrecked. Uh, so Tranter held action first. So Jen, you want to? Throw your action against uh, these here Trollocs. Uh, yeah, Trent is going to take like just a half second to look over his shoulder and go, Huh? Okay. <laughs> Do we uh, attack these or? There's a, what, a fire? There's cool, a fireball cool. that just flew by. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Probably <laughs> that's like right happened. between you and Askar's he Askander's head. Just. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Okay. 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 Uh, all right, so I am going to use my distinction, trained in battle. I'm going to use my strength at a d10. I'm going to use... 
I like the love because, again, like, I don't want to be hurt here. I projected a love, Care Bear Stare. Uh, it was just D8. Chanter's into love. Chanter loves love. Chanter um, loves love. And then my specialty is axe fighting. Okay. Axe fighter! So, right now, we do this kind of, like, game zoom in where before we've just been throwing volleys at each other and they're just kind of single things. So now Jen and I are going to raise the stakes back and forth. Um, you. Says you. <laughs> I didn't agree to this. <laughs> um, you've got your ax. Yeah. And so you roll first uh, to hit because oh, yeah. you're engaging in a contest. Right. And then you have to beat me? Yeah. And I give you two dice? Yeah. So you roll all of your dice, and you pick mm -hmm. two dice that you would like uh, mm -hmm. to be your total, and a third die to be your effect. Yeah, so it's a nine with an effect of a d10. Okay. So I'm going to roll. <clears throat> and, yeah, I've got whew, a 16 with an effect of a d8. How did you, oh. you added two dice to get a 16? I rolled double eights. Dang. That math checks out. Yeah. <laughs> so so now it goes back to you. You can roll against the 16. You need to get a 17. I'm gonna. Or you take my d8 effect die. Nah, let's go. Okay. So uh, you can use the exact same pool as you like. You swing your axe in, and the first Trolloc parries it. Your go. How, how can I use my PP to make this better? Uh, so you can roll. Uh, before the fact, you can spend yep. a Real PP sure. to add in an additional die. So like you're like, you know what? Instead of love, it's also glory. But it makes more sense to save your plot point for after your roll so that you could add in a third die. Oh, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. <gasps> 17 is hard to get. Oh, is it Merrick? Oh. Oh, oh. is that? Oh. Oh, okay. It isn't if I use my PP. <laughs> it's your bad self. Cause I got a, got a 15 and then I can use that to add one more dice and then I'd have an eight. Oh. Trantor, um, hit them with your PP. There you go. So. Yeah. Mighty. So, Sorry, you got an 18 now? 18 uh, with a D8 effect die. Okay. Um, and so the Trolloc, uh, you you swing your axe and they parry it. And then you, what do you do for the next one? They're not going to get it. You're going to uh, affect them. It's a minor wound because it's a D8 instead of uh, a higher. So what is your yeah. minor wound to this one? So um, I'm going to swing and it's going to like lock axes and they're going to expect me to keep trying to brute force. But instead, I'm going to pop the back up and hit them with a haft in the face. Nice. Nice. And just like Roar! as like the wood slams into its face. And so you can now see they are 2d8 plus 1d6 because one of them is wounded. Mm. Okay. Um, and then Renea gets your reaction as well. So same deal. Okay. I'm going to stab him in the gut. Right down in the gut. Right down in the gut. And you're um, initiating so the I contest, will... so you roll first. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so I will use my Wilderness Guide in the Black Hills distinction. How does uh, that help you? Because that's where I learned how to use a spear. Okay. Hunting. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're like <laughs> setting yourself like a boar is rushing you. Yeah, exactly. Cool. A like boar it. spear. Uh, and then strength, because stabbing. Right, I'll yeah. use duty as my value. Yeah. Because it's. It's your town. This is my town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, spear fighting as my specialty. I, I just want to say thank goodness these are just trollocs and not boars, because if it was boars, we'd be fucked. <laughs> what if it Thank was bears? Goodness. If it was boars and bears, we'd be dead. 
We never see Trolloc bears. We only see wolves and goats okay. in the occasional. So I yeah, get... it's probably because they had to like capture a bear. <laughs> they were like, no. Yeah. Happen. Sorry, go ahead, <laughs> yeah, Nicole. That's, that's true. So that's a 12 with a D8 effect. 12 with a D8 effect. Okay, so then um, I have to switch out the D8 here for a D6 uh, because one of the Trollocs is wounded. Uh, you got a 12. Best I can do is a 9. Uh, I can't beat it, so you get a D8 of, of effect, and you can actually kill off the D6 one. Oh, nice. Since your die is higher than its die, you can just remove it from their pool. Cool. Well, then I'll just take my spear and notice the, uh, him oh. reeling back from Trantor, and I'll just shove it up under his ribcage. Well done. Best friends. <laughs> yeah. And That's we That's fucking do. teamwork! That's fucking teamwork! Oof. Now there's only two Trollocs there. And now they get to take their turn. Yep. Alright, so, um... Oh, so they get to initiate the conflict then. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Let's get out of here. Um... We'll just run away, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, for stabbing, uh, for Renea taking one down, these two uh, turn towards her and uh, start fighting like so. So, oh dear, okay. Double so, heap. I've got a nine with an <laughs> opportunity. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. So that means um, you roll right now, you just need to beat a nine. And then, uh, if you like, you <coughs> have the opportunity to build some um, stuff. You can Rapport. step back uh, consequences on yourself, or you can uh, step up helpful assets okay. first. So for my opposition role, I again choose a distinction and attribute and a value. Yep. yep. And it can be the okay. exact same role if this is your fighting role as you parry with your spear. I was just going to swap out strength for dexterity. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, I'm dodging now. <laughs> I don't need that. And I do need this. Opportunity. And then the opportunity, I spend a plot point. That's a separate thing from the yeah. opposition roll? Yes, okay. exactly. Okay, so I get a 10 with a d10 effect. Okay, so you succeed with a 10, and then, hang on, if the GM rolls a 1 on their die, the hitch is also known as an opportunity, the player can spend a PP to step up an exist or step an existing complication down to a small die size, a 6 becomes a 4, and a 4 goes away. If the GM's dice includes multiple 1s, you may step down existing complications with an additional step. Players can also spend PP to activate an opportunity to step up an asset with a maximum of 12. For the rest of the scene, multiple opportunities allow you to step up existing assets by more than one step. Even signature assets can be stepped up, but only for one scene. Okay, so you can't create a new one. Okay. It's all about uh, moving around existing assets and changing things around. Um, and then the wins technically should have gone down to a D4, but mm -hmm. that's an extra level of complication we're not going to worry about in this particular session. Uh, so you got a 10 with a D10 of effect? Correct. Okay. I guess they're going to try against that. Um, I mean... So, yeah. Uh, so first, did you want to spend your plot point and step up a, an asset? There are no um, complications to step down right now. Sure. So I could step up Isha's power. Yes. Yes. Let's do it. Yeah. So there's, so there's <laughs> just more fireballs. There's just <laughs> a little bit of uh, additional juice that Isha is able to pull, and then suddenly she's got a D10 worth of effect. So you spend your one plot point for that. Yep. Um, so let's talk about gaining plot points back. You gain plot points back when you roll ones. That's called a hitch and I will give you a plot point to give you a complication. Or, 
you can choose to hinder one of your uh, your distinctions. So if you could say uh, Hunter in the Black Hills, or I'm sorry, what was your distinction again? Wilderness Guide in the Black Hills. Wilderness Guide in the Black Hills. And you're like, oh, you know what? These Trollocs are actually not moving the way that I would expect, and my training gets in the way. So instead of being a mm. D8 in this role, it's going to be a D4, and I gain an immediate plot point. So you can farm right. your own plot points by explaining yeah. how your character is having trouble. Okay, they're going to try to beat your 10. Okay. Oh my goodness, I rolled another one. <laughs> um, Troll I suck! Okay, but I am going to spend a plot point to add my third die in. So my 10 becomes a 12. And Ooh. I've got another opportunity. Um, I believe you're out of plot points, right? I am out of plot points. So yeah, nothing goes I can do to, about that. So it goes to the party. Does anybody want to spend a plot point to step up an asset? Okay. No. So we're back to a 12. You're fighting back and forth. Uh, these two Trollocs are trying to get you. Uh, can you beat a 12? Uh, I mean, I guess if I roll better. <laughs> But the other way, other thing I could do from reading the rules is I could give in, get a plot point, take a stress. Correct. Uh, in this case, you would take um, uh, you would take a d4 of stress, actually, because they have no effect die. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, I spent... You know what? Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. I had... Um, four dice, one was one of yours as an opportunity, and then I spent my plot point to add the third die in, so it's only a d4 of effect. Um, and which stress track shall I put that on? Injured, I assume? Let's, let's do injured. Let's let's have like a, a d4 of injured as uh, one of their swords just nicks you a little bit. Did the track can vibrate though? It is a Thakandar right. blade. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> uh, okay, and then that's it, yes? Yes, and that is the end of the contest. Um, so the that was, Noir that was blade. my turn. And now uh, all of you are active, aren't you? Yeah. What? Yeah. Sexually, or...? Uh, no, Is I think long I've, go? I've gone in no, this, I should this gone. round so far. In this round? Okay, I'm going to yeah. start marking these. Uh, these characters with red dots have all gone. Um, More dots. Okay. Is okay. that... And then you two had your reactions. Yes. So we ah. Okay. So then... So Iskander, do we still get another turn now? Uh, yeah. Iskander, Traner, Renina, and Nalam all can go. Yep. And then the Trollock Brute will go and then finish off players before starting a new round. Nalam, do you want to do some magic? I'm going to try. Everyone's chickety cool with that. You betcha. Go for it. We'll see. Uh, all right. Yeah, no. Player-wise, we're <laughs> cool with it. In so, character, that's a little different story. So... <laughs> We played Wheel of Time before, and Jen was a female channeler, and we got along super well. Every we were super good team buddies, and we were helping each other out, and that feels like not the case in this particular game. <laughs> and not even like you're a male channeler, we have to gentle you. It's like uh, I'm better than you at doing magicies. To be fair, I was a kinswoman. That's true. Yeah, this is this is a different context. Book three. <laughs> I mean, at least I'm not red. Yeah, why well, I wouldn't have been playing this character. She, she rips off her green dress right below. Ah! <laughs> well, this one turns out to be my final form. Um, what I'm going to try and do, is there range determinations in this? Nope. Cool. Uh, that's very handy. As a person who doesn't want to die, I, <laughs> I again, trying not to be obvious about channeling so no bolts of lightning from the sky no fireballs flying from my hands uh i will reach up from the earth beneath these trollocs uh and just 
spiky, spiky rocks in their butts. Yeah. Spiky rocks you know? in their butts. <laughs> or like grinding earth. All right. Where's my character sheet? Um. So I just copied Alex in you know, combat. Because I figured it's not a whole lot of training that I've gotten, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, which one are you attacking? I'm going to attack the guys in the back. The, the, the cockatrice. Ooh, the ranged ones. You had like a sick auto-tuned ooh there. It was awesome. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Um, okay, exactly haunted like by that. Sardine. Probably still resolve, because it's the nightmare realm of magic. Yeah. Probably still power. I'm going to roll difficulty now, first because we're just doing a test. Yeah. Do you add specialties and the power? You do. The special? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, specialties are just a quick way to show your character, like, to customize your character. Power sets are a lot more expensive to um, to increase cool experience-wise. And I get a D8 from having seized the source, correct? Uh, you have a D10. Oh, snapping! Dang! I don't know what that was. Snapping day. <laughs> uh, you ready for your difficulty? I am very ready. 13. Oh, that's... I wish the number was lower. Um, now, is a hitch if you roll a 1 on any of these dice? Uh, yes. Yes. yes, yes. It's, so if you roll a 1 in your pool, some it shenanigans happen. That's why sometimes that is... rolling more dice is more dangerous. Yeah, I just thought that. I was like, mm, this is not the greatest. Uh, what was it, a 13? Correct. Okay. The D4s are particularly good at giving you, you know, one sort of thing, so. Well, I will beat you with a 15. Ooh. With a D10 <laughs> of success, or of effect. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so your spiky rocks shoot up out of the ground. <laughs> And one of the Trollocs is gone because it's a they're a three d eight mob, so now they're two d eight. Your d ten of effect it just completely cuts one down. And no spiky yeah. rocks will do that. Go spiky rocks in the butt. Right in their butt. In the butt. <laughs> spiky, spiky rocks. 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 The battlefield later. In wow, this is a weird one. Die. Oh, this one died. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to this guy? <laughs> That's a. Was that always there? Was that, a, that was that safety He must have fallen thing? down weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Nalam has gone. You can uh, move yourself around within like the zone of the uh, dock if you like, and uh, we go back to the brute who is terribly scorched. Yeah, he is. Oof. <laughs> I might say Brute heckin' scorched. is going to... Heckin' scorched. Um, like, arm hanging... One arm hanging down uh, lifeless. You said it was the left side, right? Yeah. Left side hanging down loose, uh, lifeless. Holds up its sword and lets out a battle cry. And then runs off to the side towards the village. Hey, two Brute. Rude. Wow. Ballsy move, Merrick. I thought those were the ones who were shooting, though. Uh, the, those were not the arrow no, boys. No, that's arrow boys are big this one. boy. I want to chase them. So these chicken boys are the archers. Are arrow boys? These Kay. actually, it's two and two now. But you know, arrow boys, swordy boys, leader. Got it. And leader is now moving, uh, moving along, heading towards the village. Well, I'm gonna I kill would, somebody. I would like to chase. I'm just gonna say <laughs> I was gonna go after him too, but I guess if you're going, well, I mean, we can both go. It's whoever's up next. <laughs> yeah, but we can't both leave. <laughs> uh, I think it's Scander. Scander, do you want to go next? You haven't done stuff yet. Yeah, yeah. that's so, true. Go for it. If I can chase and possibly stab him. 
back in time. For back sure. In time. So you can run after, and I gotta like. Oh, that's what I gotta do. I gotta make more space on this map. Um, yeah, so you run by, dodging between Trollocs, swinging swords, one of them's down on the ground, like, um, like, flailing, and, uh, you come up to this Trolloc Brute. It is wounded, which means you get an extra d10 in your pool. Hey. Yeah, it's it. a heavy wound. Okay, so I need to get to initiate got him really <laughs> Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna get my hammer blade in battle. So that's D8, uh, dexterity D8, because all my stats are D8, so it doesn't matter anyways. Uh, Glory is a D10, because uh, I am doing this absolutely because he's the biggest, and I like to lop off his head. Uh, D10 for his wound, a uh, blade master, a D8, and I have a sword fighting specialty for a D6. And throw in a D6 for his cowardly. As you're running towards him, he looks over his uh, shoulder at you, and eyes go wide. Uh, so that is definitely a one roll. So there we are. Okay, so we've got a you hitch in there. However, I do have a 14 and a d8 for effect. Okay. Um, 14 and a d8 for effect. So... We're not going to give in right away. We're going to, uh, we're going to roll. And I got a 15. Ooh, well done, sir. So, um, I will buy your hitch. Okay. So you can gain a plot point, And, uh, I will put, uh, give you a, um, let me just see. Because I'm pretty sure they start at a D6 when you buy a hitch. But I just want to double check that. Uh, complications. What? Give me a hitch. If you roll a 1, a hitch, on any of your dice, the GM always has the option of introducing a complication. Whether the PC succeeds or fails at the test or contest, a complication means something else has gone wrong, making life difficulty. Making life difficult. When the GM introduces a complication, <laughs> the player gets a PP from the GM pile. Aside from distinctions, this is the main way for players to gain PP. Uh, the GM notes down the complication, gives you a descriptive name, and it's a D6. Yeah. So, um... We're going to throw the D6 into... Your, you got an exhausted stress track, right? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you slip a little on some ice, and like catching yourself, and in the battle, you're starting to get just a little bit winded. Yeah, it turns out snow and ice suck yeah. a lot. <laughs> um, but we're breathing ice cold wind. But we're still in this contest, so right now, um, your first slash is missed, uh, and you've got to beat a 15 if you would like to. Same dice pool. You can do it! I am going to have to spend one of the newly earned plot points to make this a because i got a 12 as my highest but i'm going to spend the part to make that a 17. nice mm -hmm. and then i have a d10 for an effect die oh okay and uh we are not going to spend a plot point to keep this wounded guy in the battle and give him another <laughs> d10 complication um how do you that want to do like this? sounds like a nemesis in the building. Yeah, how do you take down the <laughs> Trolloc Brute as you chase after him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because there was a little bit of back and forth where he managed to pair my blow and kind of like did. push me off, right? So with sort of like the practice, it looks like I'm being pushed aside until like I give and bend just the way he said, and he overextends, and it's sort of that graceful like blade sort of strike where I just take his head off. Nice. Trollock head rolls nice. it through the snow. 
<laughs> Beautiful. Like he, right. he thought he was pressing me, like, like using his strength and pushing me back, but that it was all just a ploy. <laughs> and then you sneeze really loud. It was a ruse. All right. <laughs> and, then, and then there's a coming to sneeze afterwards. Like God, I hate this cold. Fucking <laughs> snow. <laughs> Tranter and Renea. Trantor. One of you. Renea. Oh, Renea, Renea, I think you should go. Okay, sure. Um, uh, seeing as Extender has handled the runaway, I guess I will try and stab another one in front of me. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so you my, start the contest. My stress, does that just... It's just a tracker, yes? So, this is an interesting one. Um... Because it's a D4, it mm -hmm. gets added to your pool and then mm -hmm. goes away. The oh. D4 only hits you the one time. Nice. So, um, normally, your stress would be in your opponent's pool. But mm -hmm. because a D4 has a 25% chance of rolling a 1, you get it. <laughs> Cruel. I didn't roll a 1. Yay. So that's a 9 with a d8 of effect. Okay. Trollocks roll. Woo! Um, they defend absolutely with a... Math. 8 plus 6. 14. Ooh, yikes. Wow. With an opportunity. I rolled a 1. Uh, wow. Now and again. <laughs> uh, Nicole, do you have a plot point that you would like to spend? I do. So you could mm. spend it to have your... No, your D4 is going away anyways, so you don't need to yeah. do that. Um, you could step up there cowardly to a D8, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that sounds... <laughs> and the cowardly is something that I get? Uh, yeah, so... As soon as the battle sort of starts being turned against these Trollocs, against any Trollocs, cowardly, like, sort of activates and starts going mm. into the player's pool to show that the Trollocs mm. are like, why aren't you dead already? Fair. Um, sure. Let's do that. Okay. Cowardly D8. And then I'm gonna try and contest their, what was it, 14? Uh, that is correct. This is possibly a very bad idea. Watch me die. You can do it, Renea! Your best That's friend, Tranter, well. believes in you. <laughs> you look over. <laughs> uh, so that would be a 12. So I don't win. So no. then I get a complication, yes? Correct. Uh, and Look so at me, learning all the rules of the game. You got it! <laughs> uh, While dying. They've got, While dying, that's how you learn. They've got a D8 of effect, so you get a D8 under Ooh. injured. <gasps> Ooh. Wow. As you're okay, well, clashing and the D4 moving back. gone. Yes, the D4 goes away. <laughs> um, and you're clashing and moving back and forth, and one of them gets a hit in. And you see blood. This is my first time fighting something that I'm not going to eat. <laughs> yeah, don't eat that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to stab. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, Tranner. Tranner going in with the X. Pew, pew, pew. All right. And now you get to add their D8 of Cowardly into your pool. Yes, please. I will take the dice. Is so again, I ran away. Uh, it's it's part of that. It was just something that I was going to activate as the sort of combat continued. Fair. We didn't Kay. just get cut down in one round, so they're obviously going to be afraid of us now. <laughs> they're like, villagers. "Whoa!" Fireballs came arcing out, and rock stabbed them, and they're like, "This sucks way more than what we thought." <laughs> so I have a D eight for train battle, a D. 10 for strength, a D8 for love, a D6 for axe fighting, and a D8 for their cowardly? 
Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Did I not okay. come through? Sorry. I don't think I counted my dice right. D8, D10. Yeah, I was... I did a D12 instead of a D8, which would have been awesome, but also a lie. Hmm. I don't know dice. I've been only rolling Why? D12s. Why would I know dice? Just have a pool of them. We just make them. Whatever. I was like, let me just reach over here and grab a die you made me. So, do you want the good news or the bad news? I mean... Oh, good news, I got a 17. Wow. Bad news, I got two ones. Ooh. Well, then. Okay. So, like uh, in it. Let's, let's see what they do <laughs> for their 17. Uh, for your 17, okay. They've got a, uh, a 13. So you're beating them by four. Um, and there's no way that they can beat you with their dice. Their other dice rolled twos. So Excellent. you succeed. Um, I will. Hmm. Uh, so how's Tranner attacking them? Um, very efficient. Um, and he's going to say, don't hit. He's don't mad that they hit Fran. Don't hit. <laughs> don't hit. <laughs> what, a okay. what a calm, gentle giant is Trantor. <laughs> don't hit. No good. Okay. Okay. In the face of this Trolloc, that's skin. Don't hit. <laughs> and I've decided have... Tranter fought in the Trolloc world is unless that makes him way too old then he didn't <laughs> yes like Trolloc years wars ago. were quite yeah. a while ago um, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay what, what is your effect die do you have an effect die left over it was a d8 it was a d8 okay so a d8 is going to drop one of them down so I definitely think that this would be uh, like one of those moments where you get an axe into one of them, but they swing a sword and it like clips you as yeah. well, like where you both kind of clash. Well, and there's I, two of them, so maybe I get one, but the second. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two plot points to create two separate assets. Ah, so I could just em. give you one and upgrade that to a D8. But instead, I'm going to give you two D6s to show a minor wound. Okay. So injury D6. Mm-hmm. And I want angry D6. Hey. Mm. Uh-oh. Oh. Merrick's waking up Tranter. You really want me to accidentally axe um, Renea, eh? <laughs> oh, no. Tranter, everything's for <laughs> I've got a better idea. No, no. Oh, better than anger. Better here. than anger, because it doesn't change your roleplay. This is better. D six of injured injury. Yeah. And yeah. D six of corrupted, because it's a Thakadar hey. blade. Oh, okay. Because I'll just tell you now, nothing can corrupt Tranter's pure heart. Yeah, no, it's, it's nothing Beautiful. like that. It's literally black poison going through your veins. Yeah, I got them uh, poison. Being blighted. Sure. Um, if only there was an Aes Sedai here who was beautiful and could save me. If only. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, and with your D8 of effect, you wound one of them, uh, bringing them down to a D6. I thought I killed one. Uh, you need a D10 of effect to kill one. <gasps> so there's. I thought it added with what was already on there. Hmm. Uh, yeah, like, one of them is dead. There's only two left. Yeah, I thought I killed. Alright. And that ends up being everybody. So we go back around to my end. And let's have ranged ones fire at Isha. What, you scared of me now or something? You threw a fireball. <laughs> like, Yeah. Okay, so, um, 
It's a test for me, so if you want to roll your defense. Yeah, um, let's see. I will say... Um, uh, refugee of Malkir as my for my combat expertise. Um, dexterity for dodging and call it glory for the glory of battle. Sounds good. I can't keep a hold of one of my dice. So that is a 13 for defense. Okay. That's a lot. I can't beat that easily. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if I added all the dice together, it would only be 12. So two arrows shoot towards you, and um, you are able to uh, stay away. They're not terribly good shots, these Trollocs. Isha whips out a sword and cuts them out of the air. Ooh. Isha, Isha, Isha. What were you going to say, Lil? I was going to ask if it was Isha or Aisha. Oh, but then... Isha. Sorry, say it again? Isha. Okay. Then it sounded like you said both at the same time. I was like, no! The Aisha. Okay. The Aisha die. <laughs> All right. Um, who would like to go next? You just got shot at. I keep going first, so someone else take first this time. Uh, I'll go. Yes. Yeah. yeah you're, you're getting wrecked. <laughs> Kill a guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm. Uh, I'm hurting and kind of scared, and I'd like to stab someone, please. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... Eric, we're still dotted. Heads up. Oh wait, no, you remove them. Is yeah. that what you do? I'm removing yeah. the dots now for people who have acted. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so I'll go ahead and use points again. And you get to add your uh, very <clears throat> D8 of Cowardly into your die now, into your pool. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. Although you get my D8 of Injured. Sure do. So it kind of evens out. You guys are just handing stuff back and forth. <sighs> I'm very sure scared. Are. I'm dying, so... <laughs> oh, that's very fair. Okay, oh, that's and we fair. were while you're building your dice pool, we were talking about dice that we make. So, quick uh, look at these beautiful uh, blue on blue on blue dice, kind of like the eyes of somebody with spice addiction from Doom. <gasps> dun dun dun. Okay, so eighteen. Oh, dang. D8 effect. Okay. Two hitches. Ooh, God. <laughs> you have not rolled so much. Nicole, I feel kindred with you. <laughs> so like, I've screams. stabbed them. My arms fell off. <laughs> All right. All right. Word. An 18. Um, I don't think I can... Uh, yeah, no. I The most I got on all four dice was a 16. So you succeed, and you can either wound the D8 one or kill the D6 one. Murder! Murder. D6 one <laughs> drops, and there is one Trolloc left in the melee group. Um, murder. Mermaid murder. And then... Now, no? Would you like to purchase some hitches? Yes, I would. <laughs> so you said you've got a D10 of wounded, right? D8. Uh, No, I have a D8 of injured. Oh, D8 of injured. So close. So Don't you close. hurt my girl. I'm going to give you one plot point as your injury tears open more. And it with the one plot point, I activate both hitches, upgrading it to a D12 of injured. Uh, you are holy this hell. close oh to getting God. knocked out with trauma. Okay. 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 Noted. Noted. So, someone yeah. Deal wow. with, someone deal with those Mewi, uh, dudes. Can... Yep. Well, uh, everyone else is fine. It's, is, it, <laughs> is it our turn again? It is. It is your turn again. May I'll I take go? a dot off of Renita. May I go? No. Okay. Go yes, you can go, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Um, I am going to Patrick, try I you. to stab <laughs> Yeah, in between Renea and the Trolloc. Yeah, the remaining uh, Trolloc. Yeah. Swing it. Excellent. 
And like, um, there's got to be a moment like, uh, so you you killed that one with your boar spear, right? Mm -hmm. And so the other Whack. one like is swinging its sword into you, and it like catches like you on the leg. And Tranter comes in like a hero out of legend, <laughs> like someone. Why is his shirt off? <laughs> Did he even have a shirt to begin with? Nips, just like <laughs> hair is like unbound now. It's like Fabio. Yeah, I was like, he's got like the the oily chest. Yeah, weirdly oily. Yeah, you guys it's are like, making. It's like half light, but there's still such shimmer off of tra the firelight from the r house next to him is just glistening. Off of Trantor's burly wide <laughs> chest, which I assume is quite hairy. <laughs> you guys make him much more epic than he is. He just kind of like moves forward gracefully that you're like, oh, it's not totally lumbering. Okay. That's how we keep imagining Trantor to make it seem cooler in our heads. Very effective, but not cinematic. So we're all like, wouldn't it be cool if we tell stories later? So, I have my D8 for battle, D10 for strength, D8 for love. No, I need to change a D10 for duty. It's my duty now to protect this battle maiden. Ooh. Um, A D6 for insight and a D8 for their cowardice, but they get a D6 for my corrupted and a D6 for my injured. So, they only get one of them. Because I'll choose injured. Yeah, you don't get to uh, add in both of somebody's stray, uh, stresses unless I spend a plot point. Okay. Cool. That's handy. I got no ones. Uh, uh. <laughs> I only got a ten. Okay. Um. So you fail. step in to finish off this trollock. Oh. With a D10 effect die, by the way. I rolled real bad. Eric, you were rolling so poor tonight. I got an eight and a an opportunity. So literally cannot do any better. <laughs> I murdered you. Yeah. You swing your axe in as this trollock is like, rah, it's getting ready to finish off Renea because uh, it was going next. And, um, you swing your axe into it and it just, and falls down. Um, you can... I would like to bump up their cowardly. Or, you could step back, uh, one of the complications. You're on <gasps> injured, or corrupted, or somebody oh, else's. Can I step back Renea's? Yeah. Hey. Put your guts back in, Renea! Yay, my guts! <laughs> I wanted to keep those. Thanks, Tranter! <laughs> and you step back the D12 to a D10, just like nice. the surge of adrenaline. The, there was that moment of fear, like you might be at your end, but Tranter comes in and saves you, and the Trolloc is dead. Alright, well, we're second friends, to no. catch your breath. <laughs> There's a moment where Renea imagines Tranter in his oily, bare chested <laughs> fashion. And then, like, she's like, Ugh, and he's like, you all right? <laughs> he's just back to his usual self. She's like, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, so then we've still got uh, Isha, uh, Isha, Nalam, and Iskander. Uh, I feel like retaliating at those uh, guys yeah. that shot at me, so... The, the people in immediate danger are dead, so I'm just going to fire something over at the... Mm, I feel like I'm going to use some air and create some wind blades out of the cold icy air around them and try like and it. slice them up with that. That's must... terrifying! Feeling my exact thing I was going to do. Neat, cool, literally <laughs> almost <laughs> word for word. <laughs> I was in planning since the last time. I was like, what else would be cool that doesn't seem that obvious? Okay, cool. uh, well, you're a powerful psychic, late. Alex. It's me. I win. <laughs> <laughs> I do it because I said I got to go first. Throw a fireball and I'll kill you. Uh, so, yeah, I'll do my Ace of Die. 
um, intelligence again, and glory, and I'm a channeler, and combat casting. And do they? They don't have. Do they have cowardly activated right now? Or uh, yeah, we're gonna give them. They've they've got a D six of cowardly. The archers in the back. Up until now, they've been pretty protected from stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> meat shields are all not up. anymore. Okay, so sorry. Do you roll first, or do I? Uh, in this case, I do. And you? Oh, I did roll already. It was a ten. You've got to beat a ten. Right. Okay. Okay, so that is a. Oh, I can do that better. That is a uh, twelve with a D10 effect die, but I also have a complication. Okay. Um, that is fantastic. Oh, wait. Do you have any extra... Do you have any more dice? Uh, there are two more dice, yes. If you have plot points, you can spend them to get additional effect dice. I do not have any plot points. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately. So, like, that's the situation where, like, your wind blades come in, and you could cut down one, spend a plot point to cut down a second one. Um. Absolutely. But, yeah, your D10 of effect, you said? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that kills one of them straight out. No wounding. Perfect. That's just one D eight knocked down in that in that group. And your uh oh, I mean yours is yours is super easy. Um I am going to uh buy your hitch with a plot point and say that your power drops down uh to a D eight. Sounds good. Just gonna step Getting back tired. Asset. Yeah. You can feel the strain in channeling. Uh, Don't worry. So... I'll carry you to an inn. That'll be beautiful. And then I'll bond you. <laughs> <laughs> and then later maybe do a water bond. Yeah. <laughs> I feel funny. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I create a icy wind blade and I just slice him vertically in half. <laughs> And like the other one is like, it's like holding up its bow. Uh, Alan kicks, kicks up. Snow flies in the air. Starts pecking the ground. Oh, it looked. It got nervous. Uh, (laughs) Nalam or Iskander? Don't don't they get to go? Uh, No, they went first. The oh. archers went first oh, right. and shot yeah. at uh, Isha. Isha. Uh, I'm going to go, if you don't mind. Tim Othe. I mean, uh, I, got, I got my trophy. Yeah. I'm going to... I'm assuming... So there's a house here next to where the chickens are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there, there a window there a on this front, front facing piece here? There absolutely is. Here, wait. Hang on. Let me show you some amazing things that Tom Cartos does. Oh, Tom. Wow, that's super neat. <gasps> That's that incredibly really cool. helpful. Our best friend oh, can just do no wrong. I am so glad we made friends with Tom Cartos. <laughs> yeah. Tom, Tom Cartos. Will you be our friend? <laughs> Tom Cartos already is. Oh. Yeah. Best there friends. Uh, best I'm friends. going to. There's that window there near the chickens. Uh, <laughs> and sort of going time and like sort of sequential time with Isha, uh, reach out, grab the glass of the window, shatter it, and splatter it into the uh, uh, into the old chicken. I like That's that. That's stealthy. So uh, he's trying to like time his attacks for like when something else might be happening. It's like <laughs> I didn't mean to do that effect, and you're like, "That's crazy." I gotta say what was said in chat. Alakai Noel just said, "I'm just imagining Hey Hey screaming." So the last <laughs> remaining Trollock. <laughs> sense yeah uh, <laughs> that's delightful okay so that for that the old same killing a thing pool uh and i still have d10 for uh yeah you still grasping have d10 power. hold of the taint cool <laughs> roll hitches so i can corrupt you 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I don't want the taint to touch me. Keep your taint away from me. Put uh, your hand through the taint. Well, stop touching it, then. No! <laughs> <laughs> it's too good! <laughs> what a sweet taint it is. I'll leave now. <laughs> uh, that is that one, and that is that one. I don't know where that one came from. Uh, does it have bad stuff? Yes. Is it cowardly? Uh, you can throw cowardly in at a d6. Yo. Hasn't quite acted. Yeah, at a d6. Cool beans. Oh, and uh, you're doing a range, so I have to roll first. Perfect. And to set your difficulty, which is so much easier for you now. Because I'm only rolling two dice. There's a six. Oh, good. I could probably beat six on like a hundred million dice. This might be the first time that this actually happens. I'm watching. I'm paying attention. Oh! All ones? Merrick, oh. do hitches add up? Could you, if you get more than one, is it bad? Yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so I don't know how I did this or what magic you just cast on me. Well done. Yes. So, yes. I rolled. Well done. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I rolled, I rolled. No, I rolled seven dice. Okay. Okay. Five hitches. <laughs> Holy crap! That's the dark one's own Wow, that's one over. So it's a, it's a seven. <laughs> You with succeed. a d10 of effect. Okay, wait, what? How do you... So so I rolled a 7 on a d8. Okay. And then a, uh, I have a d10 left over. I got you. So you have to add the two dice. You must have a minimum of two dice added together, and then you get a d4 of effect. Oh, so you can't add hitches in there? Nope. That's terribly unfortunate. Okay, then it is a, uh, a 13, a 12, that's how math works, with a d4. And then my head explodes. Okay, so here's what happens. Uh, a 12 beats the difficulty by 6. This is the first time, and I've been trying to pay attention, so it may not be the first time, but I'm pretty sure it's the first time, that a difficulty has been exceeded by 5 or more, which means you get a hero die. Oh. Yay! Woo! All hitches are removed? No. Um, oh. a hero you die be before you get burnt equal out. to the highest rolling die in the opponent's pool. So you get a hero die of a d6, and that just stays with you um, till the next session and so on. Nice. And what that means oh, is um, after rolling and seeing your total, you can spend a plot point to roll and add your hero die in. So it's just That's another cool. resource oh, yeah. that you can use. It's very, very cool. Nice. And you got that. Write that down on your character sheet. Now for I don't think hitches. I'll need to. Merrick, I don't think I'll need to. You know what's I'm going to come cool? up with a new guy. You get only <laughs> one. You get only one plot point for this. Yeah, I know. Yep. One plot point. D6 mm -hmm. of corruption. D8 cool. of corruption. D10 yep. of corruption. D12 yep. of corruption. You got it. Knocked out. Fantastic. Great news. And we, we're all like, huh, oh, the dude fainted. You have just the worst luck with new characters. <laughs> also trauma, if I were in this drama. Yeah, so trauma. on my, I, I rolled so crazy good on the other roll. And then, and the, to seize the source, I rolled crazy good too. This, Merrick said, roll some hitches. And I was like, ha ha ha. And then <laughs> rolled mostly that. <laughs> oh my goodness! See, I noticed that, all of that, the hitches. I noticed that whatever, because this happened with uh, in, when we were running with the um, the Genesis system when you're super confident with and uh, the, the city, and then you ended up just nuking yourself. Yep. Yep. Like whenever you roll with confidence, that's what it's. Right. The that's worst like, part like, was it was ones in multiple different fonts and ways of writing the number one. So it was pips, it was numbers, it was multiple different kinds of ones. I got to see like a just a, like an array of right. how I <laughs> died. So, yep. what happens when you are stepped up past a D12? You are stressed out of the scene. 
Uh, Nalan <laughs> can no longer act in this scene. It is your choice on how this corruption affects you. Like, if it's an injury, you're probably unconscious. If you're angry, you probably storm off. You're corrupted, so you might just drop down and start muttering to yourself. But the additional effect of having stepped up corruption past D12 is that you now gain a D6 of corruption trauma. That is not something you can get rid of. Because it's... Ever? It's madness. Oh, neat. Uh, why did I play <laughs> a male channel to go again? Crazy. <laughs> what a good choice this is. What's so upsetting? In our previous all Wheel of Time games we've played, it's been flawless of me channeling. I've done such cool things, never once even touched some madness. I was like, no, it's cool, I'm good. And like two weeks ago, you said, you know, Merrick, I don't know if the madness system is uh, is strong enough. <laughs> it never comes up, I said. <laughs> we never encountered it. <laughs> and then all fate was like, I heard you. <laughs> I heard you. Oh, I heard you. Ones. So tell us, what happens to Nalam? What do other people see? And then what is your inner monologue? Uh, He just stops. Just like stock still hands like no like loose at the sides mm. uh sort of glassy eyed uh and inside his mind he is a tiny nalam in his own mind looking out pounding on like the glass of his own eyes oh horrifying Ugh, wild <laughs> i'm sure he's so okay. hey guys that's what happens if you're a male channeler and you uh madness happens because <laughs> it's real bad <laughs> Uh, but can you step up those, no by deal. the way. It's no big deal. Uh, yeah, trauma can be stepped up. If trauma. No, no, your my taint on the source. A hitch spent to add corruption stress is stepped up once. Oh. Yeah, oh. I forgot about that. That's a that's an automatic SFX. Yep. Oh dang! Uh, your your trauma is a D8. Cool. I'm so, glad I said words. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. And if, See, is... if your corruption trauma steps up past D12, you are irrevocably mad. <laughs> this <laughs> is just like male channelers. One it's male not... channeler was fine. This male channeler channeled like once. Twice. Three times you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to find a way to deal with that trauma because, oh boy, you're hopping and skipping away. I mean, uh, it's real close. Okay, and then um, you did get a D4, so the window did shatter out, and there are <laughs> glass shards at a D4 uh, sticking into that Trolloc. I'm so upset, because if I killed it, it would have been, like, worth the craziness, but it was just like, a tink! <laughs> and everyone's like, that window like broke, that's weird. Shard in its <laughs> yeah, that's weird that window cracked. Hey, are you okay? Uh, Iskander still gets to go, and then that's the end of the round. Yeah, I, I, I didn't expect to have a turn. <laughs> <laughs> Me I thought... neither. I also thought I would end combat and look cool. <laughs> so Iskander's gonna come back with a head, and he's gonna be like, oh, there's still one left. <laughs> Alright. Morph. There we go, and, uh, yeah. Alright, so while you're building your pool, um... Everybody in the chat, uh, we are going to open up that last giveaway uh, and just have it running while we continue to play and start winding down. So, um, we're going to, yeah, put it up. Same thing. It's pattern because I'm not going to change the text right now. And that's going. Uh, so, I mean, I guess the question immediately on people's minds are, if you already won one, can you enter again? And I would say, no. Wait for two weeks. Let other people have a chance. Okay. Um, Iskander, you going? Yeah, I am going to use... Pretty much the same pool I've been consistently using because, well, you know what? I see, I'm going to see that like my some, some of these guys are hurt, 
and all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna swap out my D10 in glory for my D8 in justice. Mm. Because they have hurt people, and I am like, nope, we're not having any of this. All right, so and then roll, no, you get to add in their D6 of cowardly. And they are adding the D4 of glass shards into their own pool. A little bit of glass. Not much. Just a little bit of glass. Like if you dropped Just a glass. That would be annoying. A yeah. small one, too. Not a big glass. Like one of these. All right. You know. While we're doing that, I'm calling out people in the chat. Look at all of those names in there. All of you people. There is one more PDF code for Cortex Prime giveaway. All you got to do is put the word pattern in the chat. P-A-T-T-E-R-N. You don't got to do anything with it. You don't got to pay. You don't. Put a name in. You get a, a word. free PDF to make your own games or play this game, too. So I did get a hit. Just one, though, not the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I did get a 15 with a D8 effect die. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, doo -doo. Okay. So the glass shards are gone. Um, I got an 8 and a hitch. So... <laughs> Tim, you get a D6 hero die. Cool. Because they rolled a six. Actually look like. <laughs> um, you had a D8 of effect, right? Yep. Okay, so then that is going to drop the Trolloc from a D8 to a D6. It's not enough to outright kill it, but it mm -hmm. is enough to wound it. Yep. Whoa. Heads up, Jen, you got a hot mic. Great. Yep, it's I'm just standing, you. stretch my leggies. All right. I don't know if you were going to tinkle or not. Don't want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Tim, did you want to spend a plot point to activate this opportunity? No, I'm not going to. I'm going to save it for something, depending. Okay. Um, then that is Iskander's turn, because I could not return and beat that difficulty. Uh, are you going to buy my hitch? Oh, you had a hitch. Yes, I would like to yes, buy I that. Did. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, do you have any complications on you right now? Or stress? I have anyway. that D6 and exhausted. Ooh, which means I definitely should have rolled that in my pool, which would have added a three, which you still would have easily beaten because I already had a nut. That would have only been a nine. Um, so. Yeah. Let's step up. Let's step up. Uh, where where is the Scander from again? Isn't he a Borderlander? No, uh, Radaman. Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. So, um, you get a uh, plot point, and we're gonna step up exhausted one more time. And it's just so Ooh. cold here. This like there's some snow in your boots, and your <laughs> your yeah. sword oh, feels cold God. in your hands. You don't yep. have any gloves. Oh, that I did not like. I got the jacket because Yara talked about wearing, you know, heavy jacket. Forgot about the gloves. That are like, oh, man, damn. All right. Yo, and uh, this, I, yeah, go ahead. Because I got the plot point for you, I'm going to spend it to activate my blade master, the Heron Strikes. Spend okay. a Heron plot point Ooh. to make an additional attack same turn with the difficulty stepped up by one for each successful combat check you perform this turn. Okay. So I'm going to go attack him for a second time. Okay. And mm. then so they are going to go from a D8 to a D10. That's how we're going to step up the difficulty because that was not but a perfect. I dropped perfect... him one. You're right. Didn't I? The D6, now up to a D8. Um, yeah. The translation, not perfect from the Genesis system. We could probably word that a little bit better. Um, but so we got a D8, a D6 for the Thakandar Blades. Um, a d6 for bestial wrath and then a d8 for your exhaustion correct? Yep. and then I'm going to use glory this time go for it the first strike was for yeah, let's see. so 
So I have a 12 with a D10 for effect. Oh, dang. Okay. Um. Oh. You got a 12 and, a, and an opportunity. <laughs> I can't I beat you. Yeah, well. I'm uh, going to kill it. <laughs> How do you want to do this? <laughs> kill it. Kill it. I think the... The, the first strike against it, it tries to defend, and I just get a nice, you know, cutting blow. And then, as as it opens up, the blade is just going to go right into, um, just right into his chest. Just a good quick stab, just enough to get into the heart and out again. Perfect. Um... And you cut down the last Trolloc, and you all glance around looking at each other. How's Nalam doing? Uh, probably just stock still. Takes a while to come back from. It's only been like a little bit. Mm. Sort of like pressed against a. Uh, against this sort of shack, shack wall there. Sort of like okay. leaned up against it. And all of you sort of taking stock of the, the bloody bodies in the snow, you look and you see a little bit of fire coming, a little bit of firelight coming from the village. Son of a bitch. Okay, Sit on. Uh, you can see to the south at this farm hold right there. One of the buildings is on fire. Bastards. That could be a completely spontaneous fire. Don't worry about it. <laughs> unrelated. Sure. Totally unrelated. <laughs> we get there and they're like, No, I knocked over a lantern. What's wrong with you? What are you screaming for? <laughs> uh, swords out. No, someone was trying to deep fry a turkey. And as <laughs> you all know, very dangerous. These are no proper safety procedures. Yeah, don't watch over that. Your barn. Do it outside. Use a dry turkey. Make sure it's not frozen. Nope. Inside frozen turkey. Temperature <laughs> too high. All right. Power and uh, temporary assets gained uh, in this scene uh, end. So uh, the source is released unless you spend a plot point to uh, have it last for the rest of the session. I would suggest not doing that. Um, <laughs> I don't think I have it still, Merrick. That's fair. Uh, uh, all of your wounds stay, and so on. But trauma is gone. Trauma sticks. Are you sure trauma's yeah. not healed instantly? Trauma real sticky. Uh, um, is there a moment before I release the source that I can go and attempt to heal Renee? Uh, yes. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to rush out of the scene. That would be using something from a doom pool or whatever, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you can go ahead and make one attempt to heal. Uh, Nicole, what is your, your injury at right now? A D10, right? D10. Okay. So I'm then, very badly wounded. Ouch. Um, I believe Ouch. the <laughs> difficulty is... It had slightly more than tusks and teeth. It had like an axe. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for the boar having an axe. I'm be honest with you. I was, really, I was really not ready for it to be standing on two legs and holding an axe. <laughs> Did not see that coming. <laughs> Just way out of left field. <laughs> the spirit of all the boars you've killed before come back. So, so I'm sorry, is, is, one the, yeah. is one of the is one of the on like on fire or anything like that? Because there was fire being thrown around. Uh, the f I only threw the fire at the first one, the one that you okay. took the head off of. Okay, it, its body I'm was badly I'm concerned why you're asking that. Because I was gonna warm my hands over the fire. Because they're cold. Oh, <laughs> my hands are gonna smell like burnt trollock. It's that Sam Winchester moment. Just warming his hands over the body they're burning. Oh my god. 
Um, okay, so recovering uh, a complication, a heal, a um, all of these various things that you do is or stress, not complication. Uh, the difficulty is two d eight plus the die of the uh, of the stress. So the difficulty that you will need to deal with is a twelve. Okay, so ace die. Uh, I'll use my intelligence. And I'll say I'm using my love for healing, and then D8 for channeler and D8 for holding power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's throw the traits back up again. Isha's power D8, and then take them off again. Uh, so that is a. Uh, what did I have to beat again? I got 12. 13. You oh, just perfect. beat it. <laughs> uh, what is your effect die? And a, a D. Oh, I got a D10 of effect die. 10 of effect let me double check that again because i think it's one of those uh ones kind of like the mobs where because your effect die equals it steps it down one time um, nicole i like to dance <laughs> i'm getting healing i'm getting healing. <laughs> stop dancing so as soon as the combat winds down uh isha like runs up and quickly weaves together spirit water and air and Attempts to uh, ease your wounds a little bit. Nice. Do you Rhea feel like, like even universe? Looking at Trantor like, wow, you're great. And then you come up and she's like, who are you? And then you're like, healing. And she's like, what's going what's on? What's happening right now? It's been 30 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. If you I was it. here just like in the wilderness and then no one, what the hell is going on? <laughs> if you beat the difficulty time I saw a dog. and the effect die is equal to or smaller than the complication, the complication is stepped down by one. You can't try to recover that complication again until time passes. Yeah, well. So your D10 becomes a D8. Yay! The healing goes through. Do you rush off to see what is going on with the fire? Do you go to check in on the village? Do you jump on the boat and leave? I mean, uh, I'm gonna awkwardly be like, um, thank you. I'm gonna go see what that no. is, and then I'm gonna run, take off running towards the fire. <laughs> um, just like quickly, like listening. Um, is there any other sounds of like combat coming from any other directions? Uh, no. It looks as if okay. everything has uh, moved down to the southward. Then definitely gonna chase after Renee after giving a very long side eye to uh, um, Nalan on my way by. Why, I'm just standing. <laughs> Has my suspicions. <laughs> Why, nothing happened. So nothing at all. Renea and Isha are going, or uh, Trander, Iskander, and Nalam heading as well? How uh, long am I madness crazy? Narratively. You can uh, okay. come out of it if you like. I never leave it. I'm trapped there forever. Uh, <laughs> the person controlling we get to, now is We get else. to the burning farm and we meet a new character. My name's Jalam. <laughs> Everybody look away for five seconds. A huge explosion. <laughs> All right. Uh, then he'll probably snap too and like still like slick with sweat that's now cooling and freezing on his face. And notice that everybody's sort of falling away. He's like, I don't know what just happened. I missed a bunch of time. Okay. And everybody hauls and uh, heads down to the farm. And let's... Oh, there we go. Let's take a look at this farm. Take a look at this farm. I hope there's no troll locks here. <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion there will be Trollocs. <laughs> I, I was maybe like a brigand one guy. You rush up to the farm and you see that part of the house and uh, one of the stables. There's like there's like a stable and there's a barn. Um, two buildings are on fire. The house is more on fire than the others. Uh, there are villagers um, that have arrived and are trying to help. And there is a woman sort of kneeling in front of her house, and she's screaming for anyone who will listen and says, He took her. The eyeless took my daughter. 
Uh, we'll mm. rush over there right away. <laughs> yeah, that's a whelp. <laughs> yep. And um, we're we're running a little bit late, so we're just going to share that this is uh, Mistress Salarin and her sixteen-year-old daughter, Fora, was taken. Uh, thrown on the back of one of their own horses as a half-man, a fade, a lurk, a, lurk, a shadow man, a fetch, a murdral, um, it came and stole her out of the house. Trolox set fire to the to the buildings and then ran off with the fade into uh, into the woods. Eep. Well then. And I'm excited for it to get harder. Uh, that is the wrong person. Here we go. You're gonna get Just a description of once. her. Cause look, look at that character created on Never Ending. I'm very worried for her. She looks the worried. proper amount of terrified. She does. She, does, yeah, yeah, she looks concerned, all right. <laughs> well, thank you for the game, everybody. Thanks for running. Yeah, thank thanks for running. you. Thank you. Okay. So thank you. Fun. And thanks for watching. Yeah. So let's yeah. do uh, let's do a couple of quick things and talking and stuff. Um. Okay. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Skyhammer K, on Instagram at Skyhammer Press or at Skyhammer Dice, if you want to see some shiny, fancy dice. Um, shiny click clacks. Demand uh, click clacks. Podcasts. You can find Massive Damage Adventures for one-shots on everywhere podcasts are. Massive Damage Campaigns for our ongoing D&D campaign called Rise of the Ancients. And currently, our Star Trek Adventures Shadows and Starlight, releasing every Friday while Rise of the Ancients is on hiatus. Um... Do, do, do. Uh, if you want to find VODs on YouTube, we are Skyhammer Press there. And you can find all the videos that this is going to be here. Um, you still have another couple of seconds to steal this from Dire Valkyrie, who's the only person <laughs> in, the, uh, in the giveaway right now. We're giving away this one last one. So put in the word pattern, P-A-T-T-E-R-N, uh, if you want to be entered into the giveaway. We're giving away five of these every episode, and we're playing... Um, in again in two weeks. So in two weeks on December 3rd, we are going to discuss episodes two and three. Mm, you know what? We should probably just decide right now we should discuss episodes episodes two, three, and four, hey? Because by that point, episode five will be out. Because it's four next week and then five on the uh so we we're gonna we're gonna talk a whole bunch next time. <laughs> I have to take notes. Episodes two, three, and four. Uh, on December 3rd in two weeks. And then we will play our final sort of actual play on uh, the 17th, where I guess we'll discuss episodes 5 and 6. Then, you know, maybe we'll talk about episode 7 in the new year and give away our last five copies of Cortex Prime. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you're catching this on YouTube, come check us out on Twitch on December 3rd twitch.tv slash massive damage adventures win your own copy of cortex prime so you can make games out of your favorite book series yeah because that's what i've been doing yeah. with cortex prime yeah he also <laughs> did a stormlight archives yeah. game with this system which yes. was awesome sure did you so know you want to make out. a snuggle pot and cuddle pie system you could what you know I don't like the word, but... it's a it's a book oh of course it is all right, let's cut the tension for our good friend Dire Valkyrie and close this giveaway <laughs> and do a draw. Congratulations! Wait, what happened? Uh, giveaway draw. It was stolen. Dire Valkyrie, congratulations, Dire Valkyrie! <laughs> you win the book. Good job on your patience. And then invite more known. people next time to win the other book. That's right. Come back on the third. And the 17th, 
and potentially in January, because we got 15 more copies of this book to give away. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Great book. You want it. Put it in your face. Yep. Dire Valkyrie, I will send you the code uh, via Twitch probably tomorrow morning, because I'm going to tell you the truth right now. I'm going to probably try and sneak in the second episode of Wheel of Time right now. Jen's like, excuse me. I'm like, yeah, if we leave the next two minutes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else that anybody else wants to say? Yeah, I'm crazy. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good night. I'm sure Thank that you so much. Great. Thank you to our sponsors, Roll20, NeverEnding. So Roll20.net for virtual tabletops. BeNeverEnding.com to make your own portraits and tokens just like this. And thank you so much to Fandom Tabletop and Cortex for donating our giveaways. Yeah, no kidding. That's great. Three of them. Fantastic. All right, and roll credits. Thank you.